I know I've noticed that since that report came out, Hank's been more on edge than usual. Oh, that's true. I'm excited for it. The list? Yeah. You're excited to, to prove your innocence once and for all? Yeah, and to see who else is on there. <laughs> Clear your name? Yeah. Look forward to my day in court. On today's part of my take, we have our good friend Julian Edelman back on the show in studio. He came to visit us. Just visit us. It was a great time. We're going to do week 16 picks and preview the race to see who has to do an hour set in Vegas. Is getting tighter. We got three picks for everyone. It's Fantasy holidays. Fuck Boys. Yeah, and it's the holidays. And uh, Fire Fest of the Week. It's all brought to you by our friends at Morgan & Morgan. 35% of all fatal accidents occur between 6 p.m. and midnight. Did you know that, PFT? I did, yeah. It's shocking. People age 25 to 34 have the highest amount of drivers involved in car crashes. I knew that. And if you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. With over $15 billion recovered for over 300,000 clients, Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Morgan & Morgan has been fighting for the people for over 35 years. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy entertaining clients is hard submitting an injury claim with morgan morgan is easy winning the lottery machine our lottery machine is hard but submitting an injury claim with morgan morgan is easy moving to chicago is hard you got to get all the moving trucks and everything submitting an injury claim with morgan morgan is easy if you're ever injured you can check out morgan and morgan their fee is free unless they win for more information go to for the slash pmt or dial pound law that's pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F O R the people.com slash PMT or pound law pound 529 from your cell phone. This is a paid advertisement. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Friday, December 22nd, and PFT, I do not want to watch Derek Carr play football anymore. No, no, I don't. They were fun last week against the Giants. I don't know if that was just the Giant factor or if that was just them finding something that they'll never regain again, but um, yeah, they're bipolar. They're, they're depressing, and then they're fun for a little bit, and then they're back to being depressing again. Get the Saints off my TV. Uh, on the other side, though, I, I think we can say that the Rams are legit. Like they're they're a good they're a good team. I told you uh I believe it was right before they played the Cardinals. They had, I think, three wins at the time. Take the over on the Rams season total is seven and a half. Biggest bet of the year for me. Paid off tonight. Very happy about that. They I'm gonna say this the Rams, I think they're officially dangerous. That's what they are. They're dangerous. Matt Stafford playing great ball. I'm I'm getting closer and closer, PFT, to also uh, just going down like all the receipts of the Matt Stafford Hall of Fame. Because remember, we we discussed it in 2018, I think, and I've been long saying like Matt Stafford's going to have all the stats. He's been in the league for so long. He's been really good for so long. He's got the Super Bowl. Matt Stafford is a Hall of Famer, and watching him play football is fun. Like his the, the throws he makes. And it it's it doesn't feel like it's uh, gratuitous. It's like he's making some of these throws because he has to make these throws. And the P Puka Nakua is awesome. Rams defense playing well. They are. I'm putting it. Tag them. Maybe make a graphic for me. Memes. Rams officially dangerous. Like they, outside of maybe the 49ers. Like I. Is there any other team in the NFC you would you'd be shocked if the Rams beat in the playoffs? No, not really. I could see them not beating. shocked. It would obviously be an upset. If, if, they beat the Cow teams. if they beat the Cowboys, I might be shocked just because of what happened earlier this season where they were down like 33 to three after it seemed like the first quarter. Uh, but besides besides the Cowboys and the Niners, no, I, I, they can, can I, definitely beat any team in the playoffs. Can I say something that's that I think there's probably a certain sect of our fan base uh, that is listening right now 
that has played this out in their head. Matt Stafford going to Detroit. Lions first home playoff game. Yeah. Man, that would be brutal. Would not want that. I, d- I that don't would, that. That would see not that. be fun. I don't want that. That's not fun for anybody. But yeah, he is no. making crazy throws on a weekly basis. Like he threw one out to the numbers uh, from like a standstill. It probably went 30 yards in the air and just whipped it out there. He's got like a whip attached to his shoulder. He's fun to watch. I, and I, I don't know, like, I felt like Matt Stafford, the discussion around him was that he was getting old when he was uh, like tailing off his career, his last two seasons with the with the Lions. And no, he's. I think he's always just had that same arm. That arm never goes away. It's just a matter of putting pieces around him, and the, and the Rams have done. I'd say, you know what? I think both teams won that trade. Well, the 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 discourse on Matt Safford, like when he was, you know, last two after the Super Bowl, was fair because a back injury, like who the fuck knows, you know? That's wasn't that what he had back? No, his arm, his arm got fucked, right? I forget Didn't exactly he have a back what he had. too. I thought he had a back. He he, he did have taken a ba- so many hits. He did have a back at one point. Yes, I believe he, he still had a, has back, a back. And I'm pretty sure he had an arm, maybe even two arms. Yeah, he had a spinal contusion. That's yeah, the, always a scary thing. The discourse was: Will Matt Stafford retire? Right. We thought he was going to walk away. And he looks like he's having fun. He's balling. The Rams are dangerous. I would like to hear from Lions fans. Um, you can just tweet us and just maybe say like. Yeah, I've thought about it. That's all you have to say. We don't have to actually address it, but I'm looking at it right now, and it's not an unreasonable – like the Rams sneaking into the sixth spot. They're tied right now with the Vikings. They'll technically be in the sixth spot after this game goes final, and the Lions are in the three spot. That's going to be mm. a very weird spot mm. for Matt Stafford too, mm. going back to Detroit and playing against them in a playoff game. It's going to be it's going to be weird for everybody. I'm going to feel just uncomfortable watching that, I that, think. That would be the meanest – meanest thing to happen to the lions like of all the things that would be the meanest thing so i don't want that to happen we've talked about the lions and how in the past they've invented new ways to lose whether that be like making a catch in the end zone that's somehow not a catch or fumbling a ball through the end zone or having uh, the nfl record long field goal kicked against you that bounces off the crossbar and goes in and it felt like they've they've checked all the boxes for the most heartbreaking ways to lose this would be the final stone in the affinity gauntlet if it was Matt Stafford coming to Detroit and beating them. So that being said, it does feel like something that's probably going to happen. Yeah. Um, we also need to talk about the fact that Dennis Allen might be the worst coach of all time. And that's not being facetious. That's not being like hyperbolic. That is, if you look at the stats, I think he is somewhere around the seventh to 10th worst coach record wise, that end of half when he decided to go for it on the 42 with a minute left, and they're down 10. Or no, they're down three. They're down three. Like, I, I I know that, yeah, you know, analytics go for it more often. You punt that ball, and you stop, like, the Rams doing, like, a draw play or a screen play, the Rams most likely just go into halftime. He just gave them seven points, and it was just uh, – and, and he punted on – I know it was, like, uh, fourth and 13, but he punted on the Rams' 37-yard line to start the whole game. Like – this guy stinks. Yeah, he's, he's a, Saints fans deserve better. He's officially a weird shithead in my book. There are very few coaches that reach that that level. He is a weird shithead. I have no idea what he was thinking. He was fourth and five. I think if I were to put myself in his shithead brain, I would say that on the third down play, they should have converted. They had a good play drawn up, and I believe it was a drop on that. And it should have been well, it, it should have been an easy, easy conversion. Mm. And so in his head, he thought, oh, it's going to be easy again. And then Derek Carr ends up throwing the ball like 10 yards uh, further to the sideline than his receiver was at. That's what that I think. Was, that wasn't a drop. That was a car. Derek, uh, Derek Carr has a, a, a thing that he does where Chris Olave was, it was, he, I think he came from out of the backfield and he was running like a slant and he was wide open. And Derek Carr decided, hey, I'm going to throw this 3,000 miles an hour at his back shoulder. Like, Yes, Olave could have made it, but that was a bad throw. And I, I actually was wondering this, PFT, because I was arguing with people uh, on uh, X.com, which is a very fun thing to do during a football game, especially when there's one football game, we're all watching it. Um, how many burner accounts do you think the Carr brothers have? Because like I thought I, I was convinced I was talking to a Carr brother with oh, the way he was blaming Olave for a pass that was no like it was not a good pass. It was an easy pass. And Derek Carr fucked it up. 
Olave, yes, could have maybe caught it. But if you watch it a million times, you're like, that's on the quarterback, not on the wide receiver. The problem with that play is Olave had a couple other drops tonight too. So yeah, when you take those, but into that account, one wasn't him. It, it wasn't all on him. But it, what I'm saying though, the point still stands, which is that Dennis Allen saw that he's like, we had the right play drawn up. I'm confident that we can get five yards if we need it, or seven or ten yards. And he thought he had a play, so he drew it up. And then you give the ball to the Rams, and they've got like 20 yards to go until they can kick a field goal, or they can just take the ball down the field and score. That was a stupid decision, especially when you put to count the uh, – the was it from the 37-yard line where they punted in the first quarter? Those on top of each other make zero sense whatsoever. But to the point about the Carr brothers, uh, if you're not blocked by David Carr on Twitter, you're not using X.com correctly. I'm pretty Correct. sure I'm pretty sure he does the name search for his brother and he I this is the part I don't understand with David Carr. It's one thing to be like, yeah, fuck you, I'm going to stand up for my brother. It's another thing to like search people with these takes and then proactively block people that are being critical of your brother without even replying to them or addressing them or just like get it. in his mind I think he's wiping the internet clean of any Derek Carr slander. Yeah. Yeah, I think I was talking to a car brother. I really do. do. And uh, by the blocked? way, I, I am blocked. Derek yeah, Carr, uh, a great uh, garbage time drive there to make his numbers look a lot better than they were. So he just took the Saints all the way down the field. He's going to end up with like over 300 yards passing. And you're going to say, oh, he's not the problem. The whole Saints are the problem. That thing is just, it's a tough watch. It's a really tough watch. You know what I don't like a new a new feature that they're doing right now, which is uh, in the Amazon Advanced Stats. I don't know if this is Sam Schwartzstein that's pushing this or not. Sam, if you're listening, just so you know, I don't like this. Um, they're showing you playoff percentages based on each play. Ooh, so, like, like when that. Rashid no, Shahid, well, I don't like it because somewhere there's a Falcons fan that's going to be watching a game, and the the percentage of them getting in the playoffs is going to spike. And then it's going to crash and they're going to be like, what the fuck? This, I, all these percentages feel like they're geared towards us getting bad beats. But when Shahid caught that touchdown uh, to make it, what was that, 710 at the time? Yeah. Yep. Um, that, Very European of you. Yeah. It, it spiked It spiked their uh, playoff possibilities by like 7% just based off that one play. That to me feels like we're going too far. Numbers, numbers are too far into this beautiful game that we love in football. Yeah. I, I, I was watching the Prime uh, broadcast as well. The, uh, it was Prime Vision. Sam's doing a great job. It's fun to watch. Feels like you're smarter because you, you just watch it and you're like, oh, that guy's going to blitz because he's like all lit up. And yeah. I'm not doing anything because they're telling me, but it is cool to, to just say, oh, yeah, I see that. I'd, I'd go hot route here. No problem. I like, I like those parts where they make me think that I'm playing a video game when I'm just watching yeah. football. It's like I'm, I'm doing two things at once. Uh, one thing we need to write down and, and remember for future, uh, Sean McVay on the opposite of a bye on a short week is great. I think yes. he's 6-1. and one. This would make him maybe 7-1 and one all time. So he's like the opposite of Andy Reid in every, in every way possible. But uh, in the off a of, off of short week stat – we got to remember to hammer McFay's teams. Yes, I agree. I agree. Um, okay. Other thing we got to briefly talk, talk about is the Pistons lost again. Um, and that's not notable because they've now lost 27 in a row. No, 25 in a row. 25, 25 in a row. The record is 26. Yeah, they were. They started the season two and one. Um, but it's notable because they're playing the Jazz at home. I think they're only a two and a half point dog. Lori Markinen was out. It was one of the more winnable games they'll have left. And uh, yeah, we're on like, could the Pistons finish with like five wins territory? I think, I think the record is the Bobcats that one it is, year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was, a, I think that was a shortened season. So I think they won seven games, which wasn't as, as bad. I'm going to look for it right now, but yeah, the Pistons, they might be the worst team of all time. They're in deep, deep shit right now. So uh, they've got two games against the Nets. And then after that, I think they're going uh, – they're playing against the Raptors and then at the Celtics and then at the, at the Rockets, New Year's Day. There's a good possibility they could – they might be able to win that game on New Year's Day if the Rockets get drunk enough uh, on New Year's Eve. I'm circling yeah. that one. The, um, so, the, yeah, the, the record is 7-59, and 59, so not a full season. 
That's they're, pretty bad. They're gonna. I think they're gonna beat it. I would. Fuck. I don't want to bet it. I wonder if you can. The Rockets aren't terrible. Um, that was our NBA preview. Yeah, we'll we'll do our real NBA preview in like two months after the Super Bowl with Priscilla. We'll get them on. I have a much more pressing question to ask you, Big Cat. Yes. How many eggs do you think you could eat in a day? Oh, I saw this. This is so. I I don't like this because um, I was raised correctly and. My father made me watch Cool Hand Luke at a very young age. So uh, I've always, for the for my entire life, thought I could eat 50 hard-boiled eggs, no problem, mm -hmm. uh, and then lie there like Jesus. So, um, yeah, my answer is 50. Yeah, I, so if they're deviled eggs, the answer is unlimited for me. I could, I could eat infinity deviled eggs. I've never gotten full eating deviled eggs. If I'm at a wedding, they bring out the hors d'oeuvres, the deviled eggs come out, and I just I hawk that person that's going around with the eggs. And I easily put like 10 of those, which I guess is five full legs, 10 of those. And I don't break a sweat at all. I think I could, I could eat a hundred deviled eggs, which would actually be 50 deviled eggs. Yeah. Yeah. It would, it'd be no problem. So yeah, that was a fantasy punishment that this girl was like, this guy is so gross. And I was just the whole time I watched the video, I was like, dudes rock. Yeah. That's awesome. Listen, she, she said that that was like the final straw that made her want to break up with her boyfriend. Listen, you're, your body produces eggs, okay? What's gross? That's facts. That's facts. Um, everyone should go see Cool Hand Luke if you haven't seen it. It's one of the best movies of all time. Wiping my brow, boss. Sh shaking it off here, boss. Um, mm -hmm. PFT, one last thing before we uh, kick it to ourselves in studio. I bought you a Christmas present. Oh, did you? Yeah, we don't usually buy presents. You, you dick. Um, this is a dick move because we well, okay, usually don't get each right. other Christmas presents. We don't. And then you spring right. on me that. Okay. Can I tell you why though? I was. All right. I I got it. I got a, a a targeted ad about a shoe, and then I went and tried to buy the shoe, and I saw there was a couple other shoes. Mm -hmm. Look at these. They're Reebok pumps Sick. in Commander's colorway. Oh, I fucking love that. Thank you. I had to buy That's it. Great. I, had, no, like, I, that wasn't, that. I wasn't looking for a present for you. I literally, I bought myself a, a different color pair, same shoe. But when I saw them, I was like, well, I have to buy these. I appreciate that. I Thank you for that. I, uh, that's a very nice gift. When I was a kid in first grade, I asked my parents for a pair of pumps and they said no. And I asked them again. They said, okay, we'll get you a pair of pumps. And they came home and I had a pair of Voight pumps that they got at Kenny Shoes for like $19. And I was like, I, I can't, these aren't pumps. So it's always been my dream to have a real pair of Reebok pumps. So I appreciate well, that. There you go. I, so I, I actually did get you a present. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Chicago bears guy Fieri collaboration. Oh yeah, that's sweatshirt. right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're going to have these sick Reebok pumps, commanders colorway size eight. Perfect. Size. What? What size was that? That was just me. Like what? Like if you get your boys a present, like it's, it's kind of lame. So like you have to like be like I didn't really want to get you a present. I'll make fun of your shoe size. No, I got them ten and a half. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's very true though. If you get if you get your <laughs> yeah. friend a present, it it has to be like Merry Christmas, but also fuck you, kind of. Yeah, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, like yeah. I I felt really lame just saying I got you a present, so I had to throw in a diss. I that's just how guys that, yeah. talk. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, let's kick it to ourselves. Weekend preview and like an hour with our good friend Jules in studio. Okay, weekend preview time brought to you by our friends at Uber Eats. Get delivered with Uber Eats. It's football season. You can now get almost, almost anything you need for game day delivered with Uber Eats. What do we mean by almost? Defense? No. Deodorant? Yes. Blitzes? No. Beers? Yes. Big tight ends? No. Brisket burnt ends? Yes. Uber Eats can get you that. There you have it. Get almost, almost anything for game day delivered with Uber Eats, official on-demand delivery partner of the NFL, alcohol in select markets and 21 plus to order. Product availability may vary by region. See app for details. Uber Eats, get almost, almost anything. Order now with Uber Eats. I use it almost every single day. It is the best. You get a bunch of stuff from, from the convenience store. You get food. You get everything. Uber Eats, order, get almost, almost anything. Order now and get it delivered with Uber Eats. Okay, week 16, who boy. I don't like hearing week 16 because it just reminds me of the 16-game schedule that we had forever and it feels like the season's over. We just have to remind ourselves, there's still January. There's still parts of February. I have a take. I'm ready for playoffs. I'm ready for the playoffs. 
I'm not yet. I'm ready for the playoffs. There's enough there's enough games now that are like, who cares? I'm ready for the playoffs. I'd be ready That's for the not playoffs. like saying I'm gonna miss or, or like I wanna speed past the regular season. I'm just ready for playoff football. I'm ready to figure out who's winning the Super Bowl this year. I'd be ready for the playoffs if it was like in my mind which teams I personally feel are ready for the playoffs right now. I'm I'm there. I'm ready for the playoffs. There's one there's one game in particular this weekend. We have a loser leaves town game for sure. We have a fraud bowl. We have a fraud bowl and we've got maybe a loser moves to the suburbs bowl. Yeah. But I I'm ready for the playoffs. I'm ready. I'm ready to get it on. I want to see these fucking teams. I want to see some playoff football. But yeah, week 16. Um quick note, we obviously won't be streaming on Sunday or the following Sunday cuz it's Christmas Eve and then New Year's Eve. We will be back though streaming the college football playoffs on January 1st. And as a reminder, the show schedule this week, we will be there'll be a new show on Tuesday recapping the whole weekend. There'll be a new show Friday getting you ready for the weekend and also a really very famous guest, big guest, very massive guest. Strongest guest we've ever had. He's very strong. Very strong. Schwarzenegger. Uh, so get excited. Uh, and then we will have another episode. The next one will be the Tuesday after uh, college football playoff and week 17. So two shows a week for the next two weeks. Yes. Yep. Tuesday and Friday for the next two weeks. Because this fucking whole Christmas, New Year's on a Monday blows. They, they should change that. It fucking sucks. Next year will be good. Next year will be on a Wednesday. Beautiful. All right, let's get into it. Let's get into the to the week sixteen schedule. Every every team obviously playing. It's a powerful slate. So we got two Saturday games. We'll start with the Bengals and Steelers on Saturday afternoon. By the way, we are doing three picks this week, right? Three yep. picks. Actually, we were going to do four or two picks depending on how much I beat Hank buying golf today, and I beat him. So the original plan was to reduce it to two games. Uh, but then you know what I said? Let's do three. It's the holidays. That's not true, but that's. It's three, the holidays. Three's up. Three's up. One, two, three. Three picks. Okay. Does, Bengals. Wait, does one of them have to be a Christmas pick like we did for Thanksgiving? I think yeah. one should be. A, I think one should be a Christmas okay. pick. Because it's, it's the holiday. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's a holiday. Three. All right. Bengals, Steelers, Mason Rudolph time. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw, but uh, our colleague, Jersey Jerry, has been on the beat. Uh, George Pickens has slowly unfollowed every quarterback this year. Mm -hmm. So he unfollowed Kenny. He unfollowed Mitch. He only follows Mason Rudolph. Well, again, just to defend George Pickens for a second, he didn't unfollow them because he doesn't like being their teammate. Yeah. He said he was just cleaning up his timeline. Their content wasn't good enough for him to follow on Twitter or on uh, Instagram. Yes. On all social media, I think. On all social media. But this feels like, to me, and also uh, no Jamar Chase for the Bengals and DJ Reader, which will be very important in my opinion, uh, this feels like the Mike Tomlin Steelers era is on the line. Oh, this might be for the culture. This is for the culture because it's, it's an it, underdog yeah. game at home. No one thinks the Steelers are good. They're very banged up. Uh, and I think they're going to win this game. So if we're looking at this from the eyes of the NFL script writers, uh, Mason Rudolph starting Christmas weekend, that seems like an easy win for the Steelers, yep. right? Just You can picture yourself watching the fastest three minutes with Boomer, and he's just going to go fucking hard on the Rudolph jokes. Yes. I feel like this is a Mike Tomlin, do you have any culture game? Yes. And if they lose, Big Ben was right. If they win, the culture exists for at least one more week. It is, in theory, it should be a matchup of two decent teams because you've got, uh, if you just look at their college careers. Yeah. Mason Rudolph, Jake Browning. Both awesome, right around the same time. In Perfect bowl football. game. Great bowl game. This would be great a, bowl if game. If neither one of these teams make the playoffs, I want to see them play each other again. Actually, yeah, Washington, Oklahoma State, if you put that on on Thursday night, I'd be like, done. Yeah. In. Would you, um, how should we rank the rivalries in the AFC North? Because I think they've shifted in the last year or two. Yeah. I, I still think Ravens Steelers number one. That's always going to be number mm, one. I, Bengals, Ravens might be just because they're both at the top recently. Yeah, recently. It's going to take at least another year of the Steelers being depressing to watch for me to – because imagine it's a night game. Yeah. It's like a Sunday night Ravens-Steelers. You know the home crowd in Pittsburgh would just go hard for that game too. But if the Steelers have another bad year after this year, yeah, they start to lose a little bit of the – we these rivalries matter. Yeah. Um, Browns-Bengals probably up there. Yeah. B Browns have owned the Bengals. Lamar versus Diarrhea. Yep. Um, 
Ravens Browns. I think it, I think historically that's an important well, one. Well, Joe Flacco has added a, a, some allure to that. Some some allure to it. Also, the stealing of the franchise. Yep, that whole thing. Yeah, but I still I think we have at least one more season left. The end of this year, and then I will reevaluate my AFC North rivalry. That's power fair. Uh, I mentioned DJ Reader because the Bengals defense is not good. And they have not been great against the run. So I went and looked back. Uh, DJ Reader, obviously, is their their big tackle who is very good at against the run. And he's out for the year. Uh, in the Bengals' six losses this year, they've given up 175 yards rushing. Mm-hmm. In their eight wins, they've given up 92 yards rushing. So when they can stop the run, they have a lot of team success. And mm-hmm. DJ Reader not being there means it's going to be very hard to stop the run. And on top of all that... The Steelers, like what's what's the key to making Mason Rudolph palatable? Just running the football. Jalen Warren. Letting him do as little as possible. Yeah. Set up the play action, use the tight end, and Jalen Warren. I'm betting heavy, on his I'm betting on the Mike Tomlin culture game. Heavy dose of Jalen Warren this week, please. Did you see the graphic of what would happen if every team in the NFL lost all the games that were one uh, one score game. Oh, I love these. One. Yeah, I love these. The so, flip games. Yeah. yeah, the flip games. In terms of one score games, do you know which team would be in last place by far? The Steelers. It'd be the Steelers. They'd be yes. two and twelve. They'd they'd have the biggest swing in terms of one score games. But again, you look at that stat and you think, okay, are they lucky, or do they do a lot of like very small things well right. that enable them to overcome being a miserable football team? Is Steeler culture still alive? That might be Steeler culture. Yeah, the Just- difference between. Being lucky and good. Right. Because the Steelers were, for the first part of the season, it was, I actually enjoyed watching them because every game went exactly the same where they were within one score and then they had a special teams or a defensive play and all of a sudden they're winning in the fourth. Now they're just sad to watch. Yeah. Um, is is the NFL impacting Steelers culture by suspending the safety for an entire year? Or for the rest of the season, the rest of the I season. should say. And Minka Fitzpatrick is also out. Yeah. Do they get that guy KZ back if they make the playoffs? KZ? Um... Let's just hope that doesn't happen. Yeah, be best for. I everybody. don't want to see the Steelers play any more football. I'm, I'm, I'm good with them. I think they're going to win this game though. What if, uh, what if Mason's got that spark? Eligible for playoffs. Eligible for playoffs. Rudolph's got that little, that little spark on his nose. He can't be. No, I don't think he can be worse. Yeah, so we're we're <laughs> we're saying like we're banking on Mason Rudolph not being as bad as we remember Mason Rudolph being. It's actually I don't, I don't think there's another team in the NFL where if you went. From starter to second string to third string, the line wouldn't move more than like a half a point. Kind of all there the can't same. be. Kind of all the like same. every other team has. It would be a significant switch if it went to first to second, and then even you know still a, a switch if it went from second to third string. So I would say if Kenny Pickett was starting this game, it might be a pick 'em. Uh, maybe the Steelers. Maybe a line. Maybe Steelers maybe, favored no, by one. I think it'd be like one at maybe home. One point, yeah. I don't know. It just does. Steelers offense isn't really. Dynamic, no matter what. Yeah, I'd feel a lot more confident in the Steelers winning if Kenny Pickett was playing. Uh, maybe the Jets might have that same thing, where it's like Sam Darnold, Tim Boyle, Trevor Simeon, Ian Zach Wilson. What I say, Sam, Sam Darnold. Yeah, yeah. Zach Wilson, Tim Boyle. No, I think Trevor there's Simeon. a cliff there. From where? From which? What's the cliff? I think there's a cliff from Boyle to Simeon. Oh, I was gonna say there might be a cliff between Wilson and and Boyle. Yeah, there's there's definitely a cliff there. Because like good Wilson, right. is average, right. Right. That's a it's a really depressing conversation to have. It is. Uh okay, nerd nugget for this game. First off, Raven Steelers. Remember when they played on the Wednesday? That was sick. Yeah, that was sick. Uh the Bengals have won nine consecutive played games played in the month of December, dating back to week fifteen of the twenty twenty one season, marking the longest such active streak in the NFL. Joe Burrow. Nine times. Joe Burrow. That's Joe Burrow stat. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling you. Yeah, yeah, I that's reported. Joe Burrow's stat. He's he plays well in December. Yeah, that's what he does. Uh, okay, other Saturday game: Bills Chargers. So, big big point spread. Uh, I did some research on Giff Smith because I wanted to make sure the listeners knew. So, Giff Smith is the interim head coach for the Chargers. I uh, read an article about Giff Smith. He drinks uh, six cups of coffee a day. Oh, I heard it was more than that. Well, the, the, it was six it was plus. a it was an embedded journalist. Yeah, it was and he w- was counting. It was with the uh, the Chargers. Yeah, yeah. So six was all he got to. I think they stopped around seven p.m. Um, Southern accent. Wish he was a little fatter, but that's okay. He actually said he wishes he had lost some weight if he knew that he was going to be interim head coach. Mm-hmm. Um, also, 
coached Roman Reigns at Georgia Tech. Oh, that's interesting. Kind of cool. What I had circled with Giff Smith was that his name was Giff Smith. Yes. Which is, if we're just going based off name, it's a 10 out of 10 interim coach name. It is. It feels made up, and uh, I, I like that part about him. And also what I've kind of learned to love about Giff this week is there's not a lot of facts out there about GIF. Because I did the same thing you did. Oh, yeah, I went deep. I, I read that article, um, but there's not a lot of lore around GIF Smith. There's not quotes from his former players being like, oh, shit, here's this thing about GIF, which I actually kind of like that there's not a lot of stuff floating around about GIF. So mysterious. There's a chance that GIF Smith, and I listen, this is just a, this is just a, a, a guess. So GIF Smith, I'm sure you're a really nice guy. He could be a rat. Because he survived three head coaches getting fired in the Chargers now. And they did not ask Kellen Moore to be interim coach. So he is, is he, he a was, mouthpiece for Jeff Smith was uh, there under Mike McCoy. He was under there, there under Anthony Lynn. And now he was there for Brandon Staley getting fired. So I feel like three coaches, you got to be like, wait, what's going on here? Is this like the, he's the Tom Wamsgans yeah. of the Los Angeles Chargers? Yeah. The rat. You know what rats eat? Uh, peanut butter? Cheese. Oh, they cheese. cheese. People forget that. Uh, Gift did say that they flushed the Raiders game. I hope that means they actually put the the film onto like a, uh, a USB drive and then threw it in the toilet. Like a goldfish. Ideally, he w if I was interim coach and I wanted to flush a game, what I would do, I would get a porta potty brought in. I would throw the tape in there. Then I would have everybody on the team go and take a shit or a piss on it. And blow it up. And then light it on fire. Yeah, light it on fire. Yeah, that, ideally that's what flush means in this scenario. But, yeah, I mean, you bring up a good point. If he's been there through three regimes, mm -hmm. it feels like he's deeply embedded with the, the ownership. Yeah. Yeah. He's Spanos' guy. They've also got an interim general manager, JoJo. Okay. And so it's GIF and JoJo running nice. the show, which is a Disney Channel show. Yeah, it's a Disney Channel show or like a doo-wop band from like the 50s. Oh, yeah, they would slap. GIF and like JoJo. standing on the street corner just snapping their fingers. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I can't think of a better job in the world than an interim general manager. Yeah. Because you're not, you're not doing shit. You're just telling the scouts like, hey, keep scouting. Yeah. Please Let's, keep scouting. Just keep sending, keep sending me your weekly emails. Yeah. And besides that, you're not cutting anybody. You don't have the power to do that. You're not signing. Anybody. I think if somebody gets hurt, you can be like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna move this guy up from the practice squad. Would it, that would be incredible if an interim GM just went rogue and he Fire. cut Justin Herbert? <laughs> yeah, just Herbert cut Justin Herbert right now. Herbert Bosa Mac yeah. hit cut the bricks. All. We got We got to change the culture. Here. Yes. Um. As for the Bills, this does feel like a dangerous letdown spot in the fact that the the Chargers. I haven't seen a team quit the way they quit against the Raiders in a long time. And it's like they, they scored a ton of points. The Bills are coming off of three big wins. I think the Bills will win, but it does make me nervous if I want to take the Bills. Minus 12 feels like a lot because it could get – could just have a, a little bit of a sleepwalk and and all of a sudden you look up and you're like, wait, the Bills are only up like five here? What's going on? Yeah, I, I have that fear too, but a little bit of that is put aside because I feel like the Bills are – in like do or die. It's East and Stick too. It's East and Stick, and the East Bills. And the Bills have zero margin for error. Do you know what's um, an interesting trade that doesn't get talked about enough? I think it gets talked about in the two cities that the the trade and the trader. Uh, but Razul Douglas has been incredible, and the Packers could have really used him in this stretch. And the Bills, their defense. So I went back and I looked. Aaron Schatz had the numbers. It was uh, week one through five. They were sixth in DVOA. Week six through ten, they were thirty second in DVOA because they got all those injuries that mm -hmm. piled up. Razul Douglas, I think, showed up week ten, um, and then week eleven through fifteen. So the last month, they're back to fifth in DVOA. They got him as like a a stopgap, and he's become very very important to everything they're doing on defense. And I don't bring this up just because it probably pains Packers fans because I think the Packers might be in the playoffs right now if they still had a good cornerback. But uh, There's another team where Rasul Douglas came from that could also use him. That would be the Philadelphia Eagles. That would be the oh, Philadelphia that's crazy. Eagles. But it's great. Like, those are the, – the because there's so little trades at the trade deadline in the NFL, it doesn't get talked about a lot, but he has been a huge difference maker for the Bills. I have a confession to make, Big Cat. I don't know what DVOA means. I know, I know that it's a stat 
They just put all the numbers together. I know it's a stat that makes sense and that smart people always use. Yeah. And I know that if you're first in it, that's good. And if you're last in it, that's... I know that in theory, uh, it's a good stat to use for any argument, but I have no idea. What I think is. the difference between DVOA and then just dumb stats that we read, like points per game and yards per play, is DVOA puts into... Con he puts context into the stats. Do they... Like uh, garbage time, you know, how are, how are you good at high leverage situations... Um, Do they factor success? in just like quarterback winning percentage? I don't think so. They should. And they, they should factor in, I think, well. also repeatable like metrics. So an 80-yard touchdown is not the same as being able to go on like if, if you're really good at getting eight yards every first down. Yeah. Like that's something that can be repeated time and time again. Yeah, I know it's a good stat. I know that smart people use it. So I just I look at it and I follow it. But yeah. I, I just realized in this moment I have no idea what goes into it. But it's crazy the Bills were for a stretch there the worst defense in the NFL – and now they have climbed all the way back up to one of the top defenses. Is I'm guessing Matt Milano is out for the playoffs too if they make the playoffs. I thought he was maybe going to come back, but cuz he makes a big difference too. Yeah. Yeah, well that was where the dip started. Jeremy provides injury update. Why don't you give us your nerd nugget while I look Does for not this. expect to return. Okay. Mm. Uh not keep in mind good. that this is the first ever Peacock exclusive game and they announced today oh, that's going to piss be me a off. Commercial free fourth quarter. Oh. Oh. I, I kind of wait now. Is it commercial free or is it going to be they're half like the screen? The picture, picture. Half the screen's a commercial. No, I think they're going to like send it to a studio. They're going to keep it up in the booth sometimes. That's commercials. Yeah. Well, you send it to a to studio. That's game. a commercial. Yeah, yeah. I want them to just, I want to stay the, actually like league pass. The one they do like the, this is the shuffle. perfect time for if anyone's going to streak. Yeah. Fourth quarter of this game. That's streak. the time they can't <laughs> cut away from it. Yeah. Can't, there's, there's a, a game or two that I wish was like extra commercials in the fourth quarter this week. During yeah. one of the two breaks. Like a, like a golf broadcast. During one of the two breaks, the announced team will delve into more of the other storylines. The other will go into the Football Night in America studio team. Yeah, that sounds like commercials. Because um, isn't that going to be, we're just going to have to watch Jason Garrett? Yeah, they're going to be right, doing. That's, that's way worse than a commercial. <laughs> bring back bring back the USAA commercials. I, want, I would rather watch 60 minutes of flow from Progressive on my TV than one second of Jason Garrett. They should just let Florio do like three minutes on why, uh, you know, making the the Paisan jokes is problematic. Mm -hmm. Or just initiating a congressional investigation into injury reports. Yeah. Yeah. I'd so like to see that. Look forward to that. Uh, no. I'm not looking forward to it. Heads up. Jason Garrett heads is. Up about I'm not that. looking forward to listening to Jason Garrett and Tony Dungy. It should be just Carrie Underwood. Yeah. All right. Well, when there's no commercials in the fourth quarter, you can thank us for letting They gave us out. a worse option. Commercials you can zone out. Jason Garrett and Tony Dungy being in my face on Christmas Eve, or no, it's Saturday night. I don't want that. No one wants that. All right. Anyways, Bills running back James Cook is the first Buffalo running back with 1,400 scrimmage yards in a season since LaShawn McCoy had 1,586 in 2017. Yeah, just run the ball. Just keep running the ball. Go under the, center. The run Bills the ball. are good when they run the ball, and they kind of found that game plan by, by accident. That wasn't their plan. Yeah, Joe Brady said that. Joe yeah. Brady was like, it was working, so I wasn't going to stop it, which I is – love that. Perfect. Yeah, just go keep doing it if it works. All right, next game, we've got to Sunday. We're going to Sunday. Uh, Browns at Texans. No C.J. Stroud, most likely. Um, here's a fun fact. So, a couple quick fun facts for you. Since 2000, uh, the Browns actually this season their defense is the number one in defensive success rate, which is pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. They have they have had 50 percent of the time. They have forced the opponent to go three and out. That's pretty good. That's insane. Here's the other weird fact. The Browns at home have been giving up 10 points a game. The Browns on the road, 30 points a game. Hmm. Pretty insane. Yeah. Splits. Now, in this case, it's going to be Case Keenum. It is going to be Case Keenum, so but that's, different. that's it's a, still... It's a, it's a big difference. Like That's a split. huge, huge difference. It's crazy that they're that good giving 30 points a game on the road up, and they're still number one in success rate in the last 23 years. Mm -hmm. With Case Keenum, it's it's interesting because he was a guy that was a backup, and then some teams saw him that said, maybe he should just be the starting quarterback now. Yeah. And then they tried to make him a starter, and they're like, no, he's just a backup. Then he went underground for a while, and now he's still a pretty good backup. I feel like that th that back-and-forth swing doesn't happen that much. I was I, I, If you had told me that he retired, I, I would have been like, yes, of course. Yeah, the, the Case Keenums of the world and like all the Mats seem to retire at the exact same time. Yes. Uh, I, I'm probably going to take the Browns in this game, but 
That that defense thing makes me nervous. It does, but again, it's it's Case, it's Case Keenum. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a big Njoku yeah. game. Case Keenum never lost a game when he started for the Texans. That's true. His entire career, three and zero. This will be a big swing game for playoffs. This is the loser moves to the suburbs game. Yeah. So you're not out if you lose, but if the Texans lose, they would. They're pretty close to being. They're in trouble. It's not leave town, but it's download Trulia, download Redfin, download Zillow, and just spend all day looking on those. I think the Browns, if they lose, they're not going to move to the suburbs. They they might just be like, oh, the school districts, <laughs> you know, like well, maybe we should take a look. Yeah, they're not even doing Zillow. They're just like, oh yeah, our friends. You know what? If the Browns lose this game, they're going to go visit their friends in the suburb and be like. Oh, this is kind of nice. Or maybe go on a vacation over the break, and yeah. uh, it's to like a nicer weather climate. And then you're like, we should really move here. And then you, when you're in the downtown area of your vacation town, you walk past a realtor and you just look at the pictures on the wall. Yeah, like our dollar could go pretty far out here. If the Texans lose, they're going to be in trouble. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, what other? Oh, I had. Yeah. So I, I David Njoku, I think is going to be big this game. This is going to be a tough watch for the for the Texans' offense with all their injuries. And Will Anderson might be out as well. Tough. Tough. Nerd Nugget. Browns head coach Kevin Stefanski owns the AFC South. He is 9-0 against the division. Cleveland looks to sweep the AFC South for the second time in club history on Sunday, which was last done in 2020. Oh. AFC South killer. That's interesting. I like that. That's a good stat, Jake. 9-0 nice. against the South. Hmm. Okay. I think, um, I think I'm I'm feeling the Browns this week. Yeah, this is one of those games. I think that uh, no matter which one, I bet I'll lose. Maybe, uh, yeah. You know, I'll make a I'll make a decision right before kickoff, and it will be the wrong decision. Yeah, the games that you stay away from, where you're like, that's a stay away game for me. You end up betting them anyways at the last second, right? Just based on vibes, and right. usually the vibe is, oh yeah, Case Keenum starting, so yeah. I'm not going to bet on him. Yeah, there's a shitload of stay away games that will all be bet. I'm rather I would rather do like a last minute pick on Flacco than I would on Casey. I agree with you there. I definitely lean the Browns, but again, whatever side I pick, I'm gonna lose. Mm -hmm. Uh all right, next game, Lions Vikings. Very good game. Very fun game. If Kirk Cousins was starting for the Vikings for the whole season, if he didn't get injured, would the Vikings be like maybe a Super Bowl team? I don't know if they'd be a Super Bowl team. I might have saved your pinky. Yeah. They would be they would be heavy in the playoff race for sure. It would like, be them. It would be them and the Lions, which yeah. it kind of still is, uh, with the Packers sprinkled in there a little bit. But um, they would be in contention for the top spot in that division. Yeah, I, I, I do think this is a very important game for the Lions because you want to build off the momentum of last week, and now you have to go against a Brian Flores defense. Probably going to blitz a lot. Um, the one thing I was looking at and trying to figure out the Vikings defense. Remember the Vikings? What did they start? Own four. I believe one one and three maybe they were bad. Yeah, to start I know the that season. I know they were zero and three, right? Yeah, they were bad to start the season. So the quarterbacks they've faced in the last uh, two months, where their defense has been very very good, Justin Fields, concuss Brock Purdy, Jordan Love, Taylor Heineke, Jameis Winston, Russell Wilson, Justin Fields again, Aiden O'Connell, Jake Browning, not exactly the best quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little regression. What they're zero and three. Um, I'm just hoping, Jared, you know, I want the Lions to continue the success. I, I'm going with the Lions in this game based on the fact it's being played indoors. Yes. Indoors is going to be big. Yes. Uh, Jared has struggled, well-documented, struggles sometimes in the cold, as we all do, uh, but he really doesn't like playing in the cold. It really fucks Jared Goff up. When, yeah. he, when he when he wakes up and it's like 30 degrees outside, his day is just done. He's yeah. like, oh, this whole thing's going to suck. Um, but, yeah, the Vikings, did you see the Vikings are changing their entire playing surface next year? Oh, were yeah. they going split grass or whatever the I hell think it's they called? might be getting away from split grass, split turf. Split turf. So um, they're concerned about the injuries because they've had a couple of those. Fair. And so they're blaming that on on the turf that they have. So they're moving away from it next year. Uh, I think there are like three teams in the NFL that use the same type of surface that the uh, that the Vikings do. It's the shoot. Who is it? It's um, the Bengals, the Vikings, and then there's one other team. And two of the teams are moving away. The uh, Bengals are going to be the last team in the league to have that playing surface next year. Okay. Just go to grass. We're grass guys. Grass guys. Uh, nerd nugget here. The Lions can clinch their first division title since winning the NFC Central in 1993 with yeah. a win or tie on Sunday. Only four players on the Lions' 53-man roster were alive then. And head coach Dan Campbell was a 17-year-old high school student. Whoa. Yeah. It could be first 
home playoff game in Detroit since 1993. That's pretty cool. That's I'm that's pretty what, cool. That's what I'm rooting for. I saw a story that the Lions are increasing their uh, their season ticket prices next year by a significant amount, like 50. percent Got to. They have to. It's <laughs> it stinks though for the fans that oh, have been going to brutal. games and watching just you know getting shit shoved in their face for the last 30 years. Yeah. And then they want they have one good season. They're like, okay, now you're gonna have to pay up. If I were an owner, I would do uh, dynamic pricing, and I would basically say, "Here's like you buy your season tickets. We'll put a we'll put a hold on your credit card. It could let's just say season tickets cost two thousand dollars. It would basically be like if we win the division, it's three thousand dollars. If we don't go to the playoffs, it's a thousand dollars. I like that. That would be sick because who wouldn't sign up for that? Yeah. Where or- it's like, hey, if we're really good. I have no problem paying more money. Yeah, the game, games will be fun to go to. Right. Uh, or I would do a, a thing kind of like the military where if you um, if you don't want to pay full price, that's fine. But your children have to work for the organization for two years after college. Mm. And then the, the debt is then repaid if okay. you don't want to pay the increased like price. Do the dishes. Do the dishes. Yeah, yeah, do anything around the stadium. The, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, though, the only negative impact would be if you did the dynamic pricing – at the end of the season, if you're having a bad season, I feel like your fans would root against your own team. Like if if it was if the stadium was packed, and you're like, we get a hundred dollars off our season tickets if we lose this game. Mm-hmm. That might, but actually, that's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Also, yeah. if you were really good at the end of the season with dynamic pricing, uh, you would just make your fan base like super poor. Yeah. So like as as the team did really well. Then the expendable income and this, but again, like we will pay for happiness. Be we worth will, it. We will pay for for a winning season. For right. sure. Some owner do that. Dynamic pricing. Uh, okay, next game: Packers at Panthers. Did you guys see Devondre Campbell this week? Quite something. Um, he went on Twitter and he said, "Not going out of my way anymore, and I'm not playing through injuries anymore because when shit goes wrong, they always use it against you." I'm treating everyone accordingly and giving them the same energy they giving me. Focus on yourself and your mental 59. You owe it to yourself. Uh, whatever, that's fine. You know, he's upset. He's playing through injuries. It sucks. But the weird part was the next day when the media was allowed in the locker room, a reporter asked him about it, and he responded, I'm not answering no questions about nothing happening on the Internet. Mm-hmm. You all want to talk about the Panthers? We can, but I ain't answering no questions about nothing on no internet. The internet just brought that quote out of nowhere. <laughs> that is some. He's he's doing a great job of separating his brain here from the internet. Where he's like, yeah, that quote that was on the internet that I typed out, I'm not here to talk about that. That's on the internet. I like how he's he's using his own brain as his burner account. Right. It's like that. That wasn't me. All right. That was my brain, my eyes, and my fingers. You talking about the internet? That's not me. The football. The things part. I say on the internet. I we're love, not talking about that. Wait. So I was. I was. Uh, I had some three chi the other weekend. Okay. And I started thinking about the internet. It will blow your mind if you really just think about the internet for mm-hmm. a while. Every day for hours, we sit down at a computer or on our phones, and then we just go to a different place visually. Yeah. And we just imagine ourselves being somewhere else. And then we come back to real life and we're like, oh, this isn't as good as the internet. Let me see what's going on on the internet. Right. What's popping on the internet? Kind of wild. Devondre Campbell popping on the internet. He's popping on the internet for sure. Yeah. I have a prediction for this, for this week. Um, I think Bryce Young is going to get offensive player of the week. Oh. Because the last two quarterbacks that the Packers have played against have been offensive player of the week. Baker Mayfield, and then the week before that, Tommy DeVito. Yeah. So, which that one was maybe. Yeah. 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 Bryce Young next up, player of the week. Yeah. I mean, the Packers defense, this is a pride game for them because they've been so bad. Yeah. So bad. If you're a, if you're a coordinator that's under as much fire as Barry's been under, there's no way that you can just like pretend that's not going on. Like being, oh, I don't, I don't read the internet. I don't read, I don't listen to the local sports talk radio. At some point, there's people that come into your office and say, like, hey, did you hear what they said about you? you right? sh- honestly, Joe Barry should just be like, shouldn't have traded Razul Douglas. Yeah. He was the piece. That he was everything that uh, Razul Douglas did unlocked my my defense. You took him away from me. Joe Barry should say, I stood on the table to keep Razul Douglas. Yeah. You, you traded the wrong cornerback. Jair Alexander has been out, you know, basically the entire season mm-hmm. with an injury. And, yeah, you, tra- you fucked me. Mm-hmm. That's it's, what you got to do. It's a good spin zone. Just blame someone else. If anything goes wrong, blame someone else. Okay, nerd nugget for this game. Third time's the charm. Green Bay has won both of the last two meetings against Carolina by the same score, 24-16 in both 2019 and 2020. So the Packers be covering the spread. did not mm-hmm. commit a turnover in either of those games. 
and I'll you be can cover the spread. Exact score plus seven thousand. Twenty four sixteen. Twenty four sixteen Packers. Okay. Not bad. Panthers. I. They can't win this game. I'm gonna be so mad if they win this game. Did you see the report? Uh, the fake report that was put online by a fake Adam Schefter. Yes. About uh, David Tepper. Listen, we've said a lot of things about David Tepper, but we have not said that he's on Epstein's list Correct. yet. So anyone that's saying that, stop saying it. Well, yeah, Panthers fans. We haven't seen it. You got to use any means necessary. Yeah, if, if you're the Panthers and you know, you're in the Charlotte area, you're probably hoping that Correct. he's on that list. There's, I was thinking about it, like how terrible of a Christmas would it be to be someone who knows they're on the list and the list is coming out. I actually think they should just keep teasing the list coming out because that's way more torturous than being on the list than having, you know, some P your PR firm like, wow, we just knew him as a, you know, financier and it was nothing like that. It went to a charity event. Just having just having the the anvil over your head constantly mm -hmm. is is a great punishment. I know I've noticed that since that report came out, Hank's been more on edge than usual. Oh, that's true. I'm excited for it. The list? Yeah. You're excited to, to prove your innocence once and for all? Yeah, and to see who else is on there. <laughs> Clear your name? Yeah. Look forward to my day in court. Yeah. I mean, it, you have a lot to bond over being uh, like a disgrace on an airplane with somebody. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I hope you're not on that list. Yeah, me too. I think it's redacted. But What if you randomly just were? That'd be... Good press. It would actually no, it would, all it would publicity. Good publicity. It would not be good press. Uh, the next episode would pop off. It, kind it would, of would be funny if just a random name was on well, that list. Well, just a different Henry Lockwood. Yeah. It wouldn't be him. Yeah, there, there might be some of those out there. Same name. Oh, you know who be might? The, that'd be the best notes app apology of all time. I, I sincerely regret going on Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Yeah. What if Ravel was on the list? <laughs> We're let us be the first he's report not, that we, not, we not. have no information. No, he's not backing up claims that I have heard been made. No, Darren Ravel's on the list. No, he's not on it. I'm just saying, what if that would be quite a day on the internet? Yeah, that I mean, what, you, the thought has definitely crossed Ravel's mind that he should maybe get some sort of memorabilia from Epstein's Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. This is this is the swing set. Yeah, someone's yeah private plane like receipt. Yeah. 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 Dude, Bill Clinton. This is the receipt Bill Gates yeah. used. Yeah. Bill, uh huh. Here's Bill Clinton's stamp pass. Boarding pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from St. <Saint> James. <laughs> Quick break from the weekend preview to talk to you about our friends at Game Time. Game Time is the exclusive ticketing partner in Barstool Sports. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I've done it for everything baseball. College football. I went and saw Nate Bargatze at the uh, Chicago Theater. You should go see him. It is all there with, with game time. We bought last-minute tickets. We bought tickets in advance. We've always gotten a great deal, and they have everything. Last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Game time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it starts. I know specifically I bought tickets uh, to Wisconsin-Ohio State in October, I bought those tickets maybe 20 minutes before kickoff. Great deal for all the boys. So find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. With zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account. Use code PMT for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code PMT for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed with the Game Time app. Uh, okay, next up Colts at Falcons. Who boy, Falcons. They have to win this game. This is loser leaves town, I think. Yeah, Taylor Heineke. I mean, the Falcons aren't going to make the playoffs anyway, but this has to, like, this season has become a disaster for the Falcons. Taylor Heineke can hopefully save them. I do think the Colts, as great as they've been this year, in terms of exceeding expectations, Shane Steichen's been an incredible coach. I do feel like the Colts are one of those teams that might be riding a little bit on luck 
And so they can be had. Yeah, a little bit on luck. There's been some fluky plays for sure for them. They also have had some bad injuries. Yeah, and and I don't think they're a bad team. I think the Falcons right now are a bad team. Right. But Taylor Heineke is a move that should – this is like one or two weeks too late to make that move. It's like your back's been up against the wall. Why why did you wait? He hurt. I don't he Smith's been weird about saying like why he's going back and forth, switching back and forth between switching Desmond Ritter and, forth, yeah. and Taylor Heineke. Uh, even when Ritter initially kind of got hurt and they're like, well, we went with Heineke for this reason. He's been like playing a little bit coy because uh, Heineke did get hurt. And then it was just they never updated us. Yeah, I think I think he wanted to give Desmond one more shot to be like, OK, let's see if you've actually he, he probably went into Coach Smith's office and was like, just give me one more shot, coach. Credit credit to the uh, Cincinnati Bearcats uh, football account tweeting, vote for Desmond Ritter for her Pro Bowl. That's nice. Just jumping in front of that one. Got to support. Sticking by their alums. Yeah. Got to support your guys. Yeah. Uh, this is actually, we talked about earlier this year, it's the second time the Colts have played in a matchup. I think the second time in NFL history where the two quarterbacks have had names that are also occupations. Yes. You got Gardner and Baker first. Now it's Gardner and Taylor. Yes. Kind of a fun fact. That's my fun fact of the week. That's oh, a very fun fact. Bird nugget of the week. Chirp, 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 chirp. Yes. Um, ducks, when they sleep together in a group, on the outside of the perimeter of the sleeping group of ducks, those ducks keep one eye open. Whoa. Just all-time ride or die, stand guard guys. I like that. Just, yeah, protecting the flock. Okay. Ducks Ducks are cool. Ducks are awesome. I fuck with ducks. Ducks are. My, I think they're my favorite bird. They're also the most delicious bird. Yeah. They're but that's, that's like a Devondre Campbell. Right. Internet, real life. Yeah. Like... Ducks, cute, cool. Do you see uh, the food is totally different? They're also I don't even know where that comes from. They're uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, that's not the cute bird. That no, no, no. They're also very problematic ducks. What in terms of how they how they get together? Oh yeah, how they produce baby ducks? Yeah, they're they're aggressive. Mm-hmm. A little... See, uh, Duck Hodges tweeted, "Hey, right yeah, after the Steelers I miss lost him. the other day. I miss him. Yeah. All right, nerd nugget." Uh, no team in the AFC has more interceptions than the Colts, who have five. Indianapolis also has three pick sixes, which is second in the conference, right behind Miami. Did you see, and we will get to the Eagles game, but um, I understand why the Colts were okay letting Shaq Leonard go. I did not. I, I didn't make a point to go back and watch. Monday I saw some tape, and he he's not moving fluidly, I would say. Mm-hmm. He's moving like. Yeah, there's he has a back injury. He's moving like he had a really catastrophic back injury. He was so fucking good. He was so good. He was like the best in the entire NFL for a little bit. But I I I, I never the strategy of getting a guy who was once good, just be like, maybe mm-hmm. I'm all I that would be all I would do as a GM. So that one that part is not the problem. It's just once you see that, oh yeah, this is why he was available, you can't keep doing it. Right. The only thing they should have changed is how they let him go. Yeah. They kind of surprised him with that one. Yeah, they did. Uh, okay. Next up, Seahawks Titans. Seahawks off the big win. They have Geno Smith back. And now we get the question. Uh, looks like Will Levis will not play. And will it be Ryan Tannehill or will it be Malik Willis? Give Tannehill one more shot. I've Let him prove Ryan, that he can have a job somewhere else. Ryan Tannehill, the the book's still out on Ryan Tannehill. We don't know whether or not he's good enough to be a starting NFL quarterback. I want to bet on the Titans if Ryan Tannehill plays. Yeah. I do not want to bet on the Titans if it's Malik Willis. Yeah, um, I've got some fun stats here about the Seahawks because we think about the Seahawks going on the road and them being a different team when they're on the road. Yeah. They've actually played a way harder schedule on the road than they have at home. So on the road, they've played against the Ravens, 49ers, Cowboys, Lions, and Bengals Ooh. on the road. They've played the Rams on the road and then um, the Giants on the road. Those are the only two kind of weakish links, and the Rams aren't that bad no. of a team. Uh, so really it's just the Giants that's the only break they've had on the road. So this is really um, – their se- I guess it's their second game against a team that they really should beat right. being played away from Seattle. So um, I was thinking this whole season, like, oh, bet against Seattle on the road every time no matter what. Not necessarily the case. Uh, also, fun stat, the Seahawks are 4-0 and when Pete Carroll wears a hat oh. on the sidelines. One of the reporters brought that up to him. Uh, early so he went week. backwards hat? Uh, he went backwards. Coward had no problem with Coward it. Coward flipped the fuck out on Pete Carroll. No, uh, he did that after the game. After the game. No, I'm saying yeah. Coward, I think, was fine with it. He was okay with it? Yeah, after, which is really fucked up. I, 
He's gotten soft. Yeah, real soft. Real soft. But uh, I don't know. He said that he would factor that into his decision making on what he wore for the game. But I still, despite those last two stats I just told you, I still think if it's Tannehill, I'm going to take the Titans. This will be an interesting spot because I'm looking at it right now. I think this might be the earliest that a Mike Frable Titans team is eliminated. I think it is, yeah. Like they've always been in it towards the end. So how are they going to respond? Can he get a classic Titans win where it's like no one expects him to win out of these guys? Really the only move to go for here is to start Tannehill. Yeah, but I think they might do Willis just because like, we got to see what we got even though we know it's not good. Yeah. Just hoping. Maybe it'll be different this time. Maybe Derrick Henry. I do like I, – I am also in favor of the – it's kind of similar to the GM getting the, the name that was once good. Just living your life just – Maybe it'll be different this time, knowing it won't. Mm-hmm. But there's always some fun. We're not going to second guess ourselves here. Yeah, maybe this maybe this will go differently than it's gone every single time. Yeah, just start Tannehill. Let's yeah. do that for America. Uh, did you do the nerd nugget? He got me. Oh, what was nice. it? Nice. No cap. Oh, nice. Four and oh, oh, nice. Four and oh. Mm-hmm. All right, shut off your mic. Yep. See ya. Got him. <laughs> nice PFT. Oh, yeah. Got him. See you later, Jake. See you, nerd. Uh, Commanders Jets. This is a game of football, and it's being played is this it? weekend. Is it in the NFL? Is it? It's a game of football. I went back. I did an all twenty-two breakdown on the end of game sequencing by Ron Rivera. It was worse than I had originally remembered. It was very bad. It was so he let the play clock go down to one second every single time. He didn't uh, get a playoff intentionally before the two-minute warning. He is doing his very best to tank, and I respect. Yeah, he doesn't care for it. So, looking at this game on paper. I think the wrong team's favored. I think the commanders should be favored, but that doesn't account for the fact that Ron Rivera is actively trying to lose games. Yeah. Maybe Aaron Rodgers will play, though. Yeah, he's not going to play. Hasn't he been cleared? I think I he said he was. he was going to be medically cleared, and he was targeting this day mm. to come back, but for some reason he's not going to play. That's weird. It's very weird. Uh, yeah, I. this is – no, I don't want to do this. I just want – I don't want to bet this game. I, want I will. Sam Howell to not get injured. The commanders should win this game. I think the wrong. I don't know if that's necessarily true. If you had Eric Bieniemy as the head coach, I think they win this game. But I I think I think Ron is active, and thank you to Ron Rivera for doing this. I think he's actively trying to get us a better draft pick in exchange for getting to say he's the head coach. So there's no gaps on his resume. I I don't know if, I mean, the Jets' defense is still good, and if their if their defensive line is, you would think would still be playing hard to get stats and incentives and all that stuff. Memes, this is a must win. No, this is a must lose. Yeah, yeah. We we would swap picks. Yeah. This this game will impact. This is maybe the most meaningful game actually of the weekend because it's going to impact both franchises moving forward. Yeah, I'm calling it the Joe Alt Bowl. He's the top lineman in the draft. Okay. Oh, okay. I like that Notre Dame guy, right? Yeah. I thought the Penn State guy was. I'm seeing Joe Alt higher, but slightly higher. I watched the tape. I'm taking the left. Tankathon has <laughs> Olu Fashanu. Yeah. Me and memes are. I don't know if I debating about right. this. About yeah, which the left tackle is better? Penn State is a yeah. beast. Yeah, Penn State. Joe yeah. Alt also very good. Yeah, I know, but what what position does Joe Alt play? I think he's an offensive tackle. So this might so be is the he a left tackle. It might be the Joe Alt bowl, but in terms of oh fuck, I wish we hadn't gotten Joe Alt. I wish we got the guy from Penn State instead. Yeah, that's most likely what's going to happen. To either team. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, whichever team ends up losing this game and getting the better draft pick, if we're going based on history here, we're going to be the team that you look back on and you say, we really blew that draft. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you all, now now you almost want to win. I think the Jets he are He is a left win. tackle. So, yeah, you could take both. The, the position is uh, valuable. Yeah, ba- based on Jets history, they win this game. Yeah. Also, yeah, I was. I think true. it was like Tuesday was the the anniversary of the Trevor Lawrence fuck up, where you got Zach Wilson instead. You beat the Rams in November. The AP wrote an article saying Notre Dame OT Joe Alt is a once in a generation talent mm. for the number twenty Irish. We need to stop That's using great, th- that phrase though. Like, once in a generation. This is a once in a generation podcast. It wasn't Quentin Nelson that. Eyes. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Um, Andrew Luck once in a generation. Tony Trevor Mandrick, Lord, Trevor Lawrence, Brian Bosworth. What's the nerd nugget for this game? Jets punter Thomas Morstead ranks first in the NFL this season in punts inside the 10 with 15 of them and tied for second in punts inside the 20 
28 punts. Okay. It's huge, huge punting game this weekend. Tress waivers, Morstead. That's what we're yeah. going to keep our eye on. Yeah. Oh, we did cut the cheese man. So yes. cheese man or long snapper got cut. He got cut. Uh, he should have been cut in training camp this year. And for some reason we used a uh, – it doesn't get talk, talked about enough, but the commanders used a draft pick on a long snapper that sucks. That's about as bad as it can get. That's tough. It's not great. No. It's not great. Uh, okay, next up, Jaguars at Bucks. Maybe no Trevor Lawrence, concussion. Uh, maybe no Zay Jones, hamstring. Also, the Bucks are playing good football right now. Did you know uh, Devin White, I think they're going to bench him again. So they're 3-0 and when they have K.J. Britt play instead of Devin White. Mm-hmm. I like the Bucks in this game. I do too. I think the Bucks are just good now. I like I, the I think they stunk earlier this season. I don't think they're good. I think they're above. I think they've played bad teams. I think they're above average right now, the yeah, way they're playing. Because they played, they they beat up on uh, the NFC South. Yeah. Which is, that, that can win you the NFC South. They took care of business. They took care of business. They also like to blitz. Trevor Lawrence not great against the blitz. I, Trevor Lawrence, like, if the Jaguars lose this game, the Jaguars are not going to. They could maybe not make the playoffs. It's a possibility. It's crazy. It is. You, we thought that when they beat the Texans a couple weeks ago, that like sealed the deal. Congratulations to the Jaguars. But uh, what have you read about Trevor Lawrence? Because I haven't, I haven't heard one way or the other about him. I just concussion protocol. We got to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, by the way, the Bucks three wins, so that's why I push back a little on their good now. They beat the Panthers by three. They beat the Falcons by four. Then they did beat the Packers soundly, but yeah. it's not murderers row uh, on the road. Yeah, but the Panthers and the Falcons are not good. Not good. Not good teams. Um, Nerd nugget for this game. I'm looking up the Jaguars' rest of their schedule. Through Week 15, 12-year veteran Levante David is the only player in the NFL with 100-plus tackles and 15-plus tackles for loss. Since 2000, David's 10 seasons with 100-plus tackles are the third most, trailing only London Fletcher and Bobby Wagner. That's so many tackles. Very good for a long time. So many tackles. Imagine tackling somebody 100 times. All right, so the Jags should be good because they play the Panthers and Titans after this. Okay, yeah. But that would be very Jacksonville to lose to like Malik Willis in Week 18. Yeah. What are you looking at, Max? I think memes is all over draftboardguru.com. I mean, memes is, no, memes is just wrong about who's the, who the top tackle is. Memes? He said, wrong? He, he, he said according to his th- his eyes, Joe Alt. No, we prospect. looked we, we looked something up on Sunday. And then we Sunday. just looked at 10 of them in a row that also the Penn State guy was ahead well, of them. Those are opinion-based. Memes, are you, are you thinking Alt because he, he fits Izzy's running style a little bit better? Yeah, and and the history of Notre Dame linemen, and easier name to say. That's the biggest yeah. thing. For me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The biggest thing. Uh, okay, I mean, for guys from Long Island, it probably does factor into the equation. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, nerd nugget for Jags. Oh no, you did that, Levante David. Cardinals Bears. I hate that this game is in the afternoon. I keep. I kept on thinking it was in Arizona. Yeah, you you like to be able to. Like, just kind of lose it in the shuffle. Right, and it's one of three games in the afternoon. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I think the Bears might lose this game. The Cardinals, they outgained the 49ers last week. I would, you're down on the Bears right now, but I don't think, I don't think the Bears are as bad as you think. No, I no. Think, I think you're letting your personal emotions no. regarding the gateway game. I'm not down, I'm not down on the Bears. I, I'm very excited about the Bears' future. The, the rest of the season, it's, it's back to, like, losing is better than winning. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Like especially a game like this, because the Cardinals who you're you're neck and neck with for a pick. So I, I'm as high as I could be on the Bears going forward. The rest of the season, there is no benefit in, in winning these games anymore. This might be the Joe Alt Bowl. The um, let's see, it is yeah Arizona yeah. So if if the this could be huge swing because if the Bears win this game, they go from the fifth pick to like the the eleventh pick. It's funny because this weekend I think. Big Cat's going to be rooting for the Commanders, and I'm going to be rooting for the Bears. No, the Jets can – if the Jets win, it's fine too. Yeah, I guess so because you're both 5-9. and nine. Right, right. Yeah, you you are going to be rooting for the Bears. So. Let's go yeah. Bears. Also, I, I like that everyone came out. It's cool that everyone on the Bears came out and was like, it'd be a mistake to trade Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that means nothing. DJ Moore said very – he didn't equivocate. He was like, it, it shouldn't be a conversation. He should be a quarterback. Right, and unfortunately, like, I like that. I like that everyone has his back, but you can't make a decision based on who the players like. Right. Unfortunately. Like, it's just a fact. Like, you can't 
can't be like, oh, we're going to draft someone else. Hope they're going to still want to play football. Yeah, they're not the GM. Yeah, they're going to still want to play football. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, it is cool to see everyone rally behind him. And, uh, yeah, I don't really want – this game is whatever. It does mean a lot. Got to lose. It does mean a lot lose. for the loser. Just lose. Uh, okay, the big game. Oh, yeah, Nerd Nugget. Do, 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 do. Oh, man. Nerd for Nugget game, of the week. For this game. It's crazy. In the Cardinals' first 101 seasons as an NFL franchise from 1920 to 2020, there were six made field goals of 56-plus yards. So 50, six field goals, 56-plus, in 100 seasons. Matt Prater's 58-yard field goal versus the 49ers last week gave him seven field goals of 56-plus yards in just 44 games in Arizona. Yeah, Matt Prater's very, very strong. 44 so games. Strong. He's so strong. Seven long field goals is more than the first 100 years of the franchise. Prater salad. It's a lot. Yeah, his 58-yarder that he kicked last week, I think that would have been good from like 73. It was crazy. Yeah, but they didn't kick long field goals back in the day. That's a good stat for like the last 20 True. years. 100 Still, years. Still, yeah. yeah. I wonder what what was the long can you find that for us? In like the nineteen hundreds? Yeah, like what was the long what was the record for the longest field goal until it was broken sometime in the nineties? That would it, be interesting. It was Dempsey. It was Dempsey, the kicker that had the uh the club foot. Yeah. And he had the special shoe that he he wore that was just like it was half of a foot, so the front of it was just flat. How how long was it? Uh he kicked a sixty Oh, three yarder. That's longer than I expected. But they they made it a rule that you're not allowed to have a kicker that has a front flat. Right. Foot. Right. We need kickers with two feet here. Find that for us, Jake. I'm, I'm interested in that. It was Dempsey. I think it was 63, Looking. and then that was tied, and then I think it got broken to 64. Because kicker and position is definitely now. one of those positions that you can note, like, where it became very different. Where it became specialized. Where yeah, where guys like, are really good at it, and they don't miss, and yeah. So My the field dimensions have been the same since 1920. Well, that's that. I don't think that's true because the – well, no, the but uprights just, used to be at the front of the end zone. But they would just count it differently. Yeah. yeah. They would count it exactly the same yeah. as the yardage. What do you got? I'm still looking. Okay. Uh, add it on to the next Nerd Nugget. Wait, that was Nerd Nugget of the Week? Yeah. I'm trying to think whichever what other ones. Oh, the Pete Carroll one should have Yeah, the no cap. Out. Yeah, no cap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't hit the same one. Oh, but that one, I said that one. You should have made it Nerd Nugget of the Week. Go ahead, I'll Jesse. make it. Go ahead. That was Nerd Nugget of the Week. Do, 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 do. Nerd Nugget of the Week. If I, if I defeat you to a Nerd Nugget, Jake, I should, we should get a locker, and I should get to put you in the locker. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. We have lockers, yeah. but I don't know if they're big enough. Jake Locker. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Last game on, or no, not last game on Sunday, but. Last game in the afternoon, best game, Fraud Bowl, Cowboys at Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Who baby? Who baby? Uh, let's start with the fact that uh, we know why Tyree Kill has been scoring all those touchdowns. He's on his third baby this year with three different women. Yeah, he's that. Jake was like, "What's going on with with Tyree Kill?" I was like, "He's just been doing a baby bump all year long." Yeah, he's been scoring every single week. Yeah, literally. Yes, on and off the field. Yes. Um, he also, I think. Congrats. I think he got married like last month. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. Settling down. Yeah. I guess having three kids in the same calendar year will will make you reevaluate some stuff. I don't know if any of them are with his wife. Uh, there's got to be one, right? I hope. I don't know. Good luck yeah. to the couple. He has a type. Yeah. He's got a type. I, I saw the graphic that they tweeted out and it was like, all right, I know. I know what you're into, Tyreek. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Tyreek's having a great season on and off the field. He's getting a head start on his post-NFL career being a porn star. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Although, yeah, I mean, I guess they probably do pay more for cream pies. No comment. <laughs> um, do they? Do you, you get paid more or less? I think I think cream pies, because that's like not everything is a cream pie, so it's like a specialized. Like that would, I don't know if that's an add-on for the guy. I think the girl gets paid more for that. For the guy, it's just like, maybe. I would rather do that. Oh, Hank said, hmm, maybe not. No, oh, yeah, I agree. You know how the budgets work? On a, that'd be funny if it actually was a line item. Tier system, yeah. Like, yeah. All right, we got craft services for the food. Mm-hmm. This one's going to be a cream pie, so we're going to add an extra thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, TFing beforehand. It, yeah. Tom, all right, we're watching Tom Dempsey's 63-yarder on 1970. Yeah, he's, see the, his, the front of his foot is just flat. That's cool. Because he was born with half of a foot. Okay. Okay, that's not a 63 yarder though. That's like a 62 and seven eighths yarder. You really shouldn't be 
counting inches like that. I should. <laughs> um, all right, so that was a good nerd nugget then, Jake. Wait, Stand are, correct. Are you talking about my penis or my height? Probably I was both. talking about height, but if you were thinking penis. No, I was thinking height originally, and then I was like, maybe he's talking about my penis again. No, I'd never talk about another man's penis. Back to Tyree Kill, cream pie. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm excited for this game. I've been thinking about it a lot. It is the fraud bowl. It's the unstoppable force versus the immovable object. The Cowboys on the road versus the Dolphins playing a team over 500. Hank, how are you feeling in Cowboy land? I feel good. I feel like this is the get right game. This is the game we prove to the world we're for real. And it's going to give us all the momentum we need going into the playoffs. Still trying to trying to win the division. Win out, we win the division, right, Max? Is that correct? Oh, let's let Max run the numbers real quick. No. It's not correct? Not correct. Hank, is that not correct? I trust Max, uh, but we want to win the division. It seemed like you really set he- Max up to say, yeah, you would win the division, then you were wrong. No, I actually didn't know. I, I okay. was legitimately... Right now, uh, the Cowboys are listed ahead of the Eagles. That's but that's because I- the Eagles haven't played the Giants yet. Oh. because So they have a better divisional record. Got it. But that's only because we haven't played the Giants. Got it. Yeah, this is going Wait, to be... Wait, but the Cowboys only have one loss in the division as well. I don't think they have as many divisional wins, though. No, they actually have more. Do they? Yeah. Yeah. But we we still play the Cardinals as well. Conference. What? You're talking conference now. Yeah. Wait. You said division. Division. If the Eagles and Cowboys win their final three games, the division would be decided by strength of victory tiebreaker, which can't be determined yet. Oh, what strength of Via victory? Ed Werder. That might. So what you're saying, Max? I think it starts. It goes head to head. Then it goes division. Then it goes conference. I think conference is what you're talking about. Because the yeah. wait no, but the Cowboys have three losses and the Cowboys yeah, and the Eagles they, both have yeah. three losses. So like, I don't know. People, I think it, I've seen people say that. Like would, the the narrative right now is that if the Eagles win out, they still get the two. Like the percentage, I think like the percentage. All right, let's look. Thing. I'm gonna do the simulator right yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. What's awesome while you're looking at that is like I'm sure you guys know this, but I'm sure some listeners don't. Like the final tiebreaker is a coin flip. Yeah, which yeah, is, it should be telling. I don't think it'll ever happen. It happens for draft picks sometimes, but. Like, could you imagine? Who do you send out? Who do the Cowboys and the Eagles send out for that coin toss? Head coach each team or owner? No, like pick some anybody from your franchise's history. Where would they do it? That. Like in the office? Right now, Roger Goodell's office. Yeah, it's. A, I just did it on the playoff simulator. It does have the Eagles winning the division? But I think you have to take into account every other game that you fill out Fuck. to figure out what the strength of victory is. All right, so let's do. But this. Like we All have right. the Chiefs. They they okay. didn't play the Chiefs. All right, uh, Saints Rams. We're going to do all no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so strength of victory is the fifth Imagine tiebreaker. Imagine we just filled out every key yeah. for the rest of the strength season. Strength of victory is the fifth, and then it goes down to 12. 12 is the coin toss. Mm. I needed to get to a there's, coin toss. There's net touchdowns, net points. Like, this will never happen. Max losing a <laughs> coin toss would be incredible. <laughs> yeah. They should actually have the president do it. Oh, man. They don't never get to Sleepy that. Joe try to flip a coin. Isn't that one of the tests that you Between give somebody snaps? to see? Yeah. yeah. How good uh, are you? Okay. I kind of like the Cowboys in this game. Here's I why. don't. Here's why. I'll make my argument, then you make your argument. Okay. So, the Cowboys uh, have given up 264 points this season. Fifth best in the league. Half of those games, they gave up 70 points. So, the other half is a majority of the points they gave up. Those seven games where they only gave up 70 points have all been against bottom-tier offensive lines. So, Commanders, Giants, Panthers, Giants twice, Panthers, Patriots, Jets, Rams even are in the bottom half. They're they're more like in the middle. The Dolphins have had good offensive line play, but now they have a shitload of injuries. So, they lost. I think they got their tackle back, but then they lost Austin Jackson, who might play with an oblique injury. I think the Cowboys might be able to, to get home. I think they might be able to pressure two in this game. Um, my counterpoint is that Tyreek Hill is going to be like 110%. Yeah. And he's ready to go. And the uh, baby bump. And the baby bump, which is just his entire season has been a baby bump. But I feel like in this case, they held him out last week for no real reason other than to, to just make sure he didn't get hurt again. Yep. Because he was ready to go in pregame warm-ups. Um, there's no defense for Tyreek Hill. There's no protection that you can put on Tyreek Hill that will stop him. He'll cream pie no matter what. We've, we've learned that. Uh he is going to feast on the Dallas Cowboys defense, I think. And also, part of this might be because I've been watching the in-season hard knocks with the Dolphins, so I've got that like attachment to them that you get every every preseason Yep. when you watch it. Uh, Mike McDaniel stood up in front of the team after they lost to the Titans, and um, the speech that he gave to the team was just him 
going through every single mistake that he made as a coach and how he personally cost them the game. I love it. And how he needs to do these things differently because he was counting, he was begging his players to um, like have to make superhuman plays in order to keep them in that game, yep. to win that game. And he put them in bad positions and they almost overcame how shitty his coaching was. At love that. Game. I love it. I love. I'm. This is my Mike McDaniel game. Uh, I think that the team's going to line up and be ready to go. And I, I love Tyreek Hill in this game. This game, no matter whoever wins this game, the loser, I'm going to think is just forget about it. Biggest fraud ever. Yeah, no chance. I, I will of- change my perception on the loser of this t- this game so severely. Mm-hmm. And the and winner, winner. Is Super Bowl, yeah, yeah, no, the winner's yeah. a Super Bowl contender in my mind. This this is the most important game of the of the season in the entire NFL. Yeah, they might as Besides well just Jeff. eliminate the loser from the playoffs and put the winner into their conference championship. These should have to the coach should have to wear a patch on his jacket like uh, the Walter Payton Man of the Year. This is fraud on it. So now that you've listened to all this, um, if you're smart. You should wait to see who the loser is and then put a future on him because we're going to be so wrong. Yep. And we are going to completely eliminate the loser. And you should fade the fuck out of the, the winner. winner. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, all right. Nerd. No, we just, won't be doing that. I just yeah. thought of no, it. No, no, no. We'll be, be clear. Yeah. We'll stay clear with our overreaction. Yeah. This game matters more than every other game on the calendar. I'm going to have it in the back of my head that I'm wrong about it, but I'm still going to follow my heart. Correct. Like, send the Cowboys home. Yeah. We will lead. We will lead Tuesday's episode with and the Dolphins or the Cowboys have been eliminated. Mm-hmm. Promise. I just thought of an impromptu nerd nugget. Uh-oh. Oh, no. This Do you is, guys think this whoa, is... Whoa, you're going... Jake, you're really, you're really stretching Well, it's here. not confirmed, whoa. but I want to... Are you going to freestyle a nerd nugget? Yeah. Holy shit. Do you guys think this is the first ever NFL game where the two head coaches are Mike Mix? No, I can't. McCarthy, he's probably coached against McDaniel, Scott, uh, Josh McDaniels before. Oh, no, yeah. Mike Mix. Mike Mix. Saying. Huh? Oh, Mike Mix. Mike McCoy, wasn't he the head coach of the Chargers? Yeah. Mike Mick, Mike, Mike, yeah, Mike McCoy was. Or was he, was he with them? No, he was at the Chargers. No, he was at the Chargers. Yeah. Yeah, you know who else was there? Fucking gif. Mike McShanahan. It might Brad. be. It might be. Mike McShanahan. Um, That'd be a great name. I would hire that anyways, guy in a second. The confirmed our nugget uh, via the NFL and CBS. The stat does back up the fraud ball allegations. Cowboys versus Dolphins will be the first game in NFL history between teams with 20 combined wins, but one or fewer wins versus teams above 500. Cowboys, 1-3 against teams above 500, 9-1 against teams 500 or below. Dolphins, 0-3 oh above 500, 10-1 versus 500 or below. Not only will I call the losing team fraud, I'll call them Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Chargers played the Packers week six in 2015. So that was Mike McCoy. It was Mike, Mike McCarthy. Yep. All right. So probably second game ever. Don't make me fucking go. No, no, it's I'm okay. going to find more Mike Mix. <laughs> Mike Serious? Mix. You've given him a purpose now, Jake. Well, it's, it's cool. It's Christ. the Mike McBowl. Mike McBowl. Uh, okay. Sounds like a name. Mike McBowl. That's actually a pretty good name. Yeah. Are you... Um, Todd Bowles shows up next year after he's been fired for an interview. He's like, hey, I, let me please coach. My name's... uh. Mike McBowl. Am I loading up on the Cowboys? Yes. Oh, you are. It's a load-up game. You're going to take them in, in our weekly picks here? Find out. Well, you said you're loading up on them. I am. You've been pretty good at gambling this year too, right? No. But, no, yeah, it's been bad. I, no, there's no buts. No buts <laughs> I'm due. That was a big but. Yeah. But I'm due. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. But I'll give you a but. But Hank has actually been pretty, probably the best gambler on the show until this year. Yeah, because we were we were looking he, at his he stats. Had, no, he he had no he hit one hungry dog on a bonus day last year. But it was mean, the holidays. <laughs> yeah. Facts are facts. We've been looking at Hank's stats, and leading into this year, he was actually up money over his entire career gambling on the Barstool Sportsbook. Whoa! And I nowhere near that for me. I know it's nowhere near that for Big Cat. No. Um, but this no, year, no, no. Hank's been so bad that not only has he lost all his money this year, but he lost all his gains from his previous seasons. No, I got a, I got like a small island country's GDP. <laughs> <laughs> Pick a small island country. Uh, okay, last game on Sunday, Patriots, Broncos, Christmas Eve. Why is this prime time? Oh, yeah, give because me a flex. Because we're the Patriots, <laughs> and the Patriots <laughs> are America's team. We're a fucking dynasty. I it, think you guys are going to win this game. No, uh, you're not going to win this game. I think you're going to cover this game. Did you see the news this week uh, that NFL 
now looking at more game ball deflate allegations. Uh Uh-oh. Yeah, so in the Chiefs-Patriots game, they found that a bunch of the kicking balls, like all the kicking balls, had been deflated down to 11 pounds per square inch instead of up to the standard 13 pounds per square inch. And now the NFL is just saying, oh, yeah, that's the ideal gas law. It got it naturally deflated down to that. Can you think of any other important games huh. where the pay, where the, the balls were deflated down to 11 pounds per square inch and the NFL did not accept the argument of it being the ideal gas law? Mm. I can think of one. Mm. This they should they should personally apologize to Tom Brady. Yes. After the the findings of last week's game. Agreed. You think they're going to cover? Yeah. Patriots stopped the win. run very well. Maybe run the I don't know if Ramondre's playing, is he? I'm not sure. Garrett Bowles on the Broncos did say playoffs football from here on out. Okay. I love when that happens. Yeah. You playoffs. Lose, you go home. They have an 80% chance of making the playoffs if they win all the the remaining games. They might set a record for the most playoff losses in a single season. Yeah. That's true. It's a possibility. Uh, okay, Nerd Nugget. Also, I don't think this game t- can be flexible because it's technically not Sunday Night Football. It's an NFL Network game. Ah. So that might ha- have to do with it. That makes sense. Ah. Is Saturday that... is the two NBC games. Got it. That always fucks with my brain when they're like Thursday Night Football on Saturday. Monday yeah. Night Football on Thursday. Yeah. 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 Uh, Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson needs one passing touchdown to become the second Bronco, quarterback Peyton Manning in 2012 and 13, to pass for at least one touchdown in each of the first 15 games of a single season. Wow. Mm. That really just shows you how bad Broncos quarterbacks have been besides Peyton, Peyton Manning. Yeah. Yeah. John Elway never did it. Huh? Yeah, they, that wasn't a passing league. No. Also, 15 games of a season. How many regular season games? Was it still 16? It was 14 and then 16, but it was 16 for a for lot of his career. As, yeah. uh, really, as long as I can remember watching football, it was 16. And 14 was like what? Yeah, no, 14 was way longer. I, th- I think it was, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Monday. Monday. We got three games. Chris, So much football. Love it. Raiders or Chiefs? I don't know. Maybe the Raiders? No, That's all I, I wrote down. No, I think it's the Chiefs. Okay. You know what's a crazy I, stat? I think I think Rice is dialed. You know what's a crazy stat? Because I think we all admit Travis Kelsey, Hall of Famer, incredible tight end, um, has maybe lost a little step this year. It also, you also could make the argument it's maybe not his lost step. It's the fact that the receivers suck and everyone can just focus on him. Travis Kelsey's still leading the league in, in yards for tight ends. Yeah, it's crazy. Because I, I, didn't, I, I went to look it up. And I was shocked. We're used to seeing Travis Kelsey put up 150-yard games all the time. It puts into perspective just how good he is. The fact that everyone's like, ah, he's lost step. He's still leading the league in, in receiving yards. Is this Travis Kelsey's best season? Yeah. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. The uh, way he gets talked about now is, well, it's it's funny because like if you listen to like Fantasy Pocket, it's like, he might not be TE1 anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. He's still fucking really good. I, I think that the Chiefs are... Their switch flipping is ine- inevitable. Yeah, I think that's this should week, start here. It gets started, and I think that the Chiefs. I think that we're going to end up looking at the season and saying the Chiefs are the number one seed. The only thing is, um, Patrick Mahomes historically is a big uh, favorite. Like they don't cover a lot, right? Because they just don't have to blow teams out. They kind of have the game in hand, run the ball. Second half, second half unders in the Chiefs. I think is like. 13-2 and two this year. Yeah, we talked to Julian Edelman a lot about the Chiefs and the receivers. Turns out drops are contagious. They are. So hopefully yes. they've stopped that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, n- nerd Nugget. AFC West titles at the conclusion of the 2015 season. Broncos 15, Chargers 15, Raiders 15, Chiefs 8. AFC West titles as it stands today. 15-15-15-15. With a win against the Raiders, the Chiefs will have the most AFC West titles, completely flipping the script in eight seasons. We have Pete Sweeney. God, it'd be so I think that's the nerd nugget of the week. It'd be so awesome. I had it, and then I switched it. Nah, you made a mistake. That's a good nerd nugget. It'd be so cool yeah. to be a Chiefs fan. Yeah. God damn. Should have stuck with my gut. We're not allowed in KC. We are now. Oh. I think I think the poll ended up 52% were allowed. Fuck back. yes. So, yeah. I might buy a house there. I, I went back. So, you know, like when someone will like a tweet from weeks ago? Someone did it on that thread, and I went back, and I just started laughing again about that guy. It was just like. Don't even try to come to KC. Mm-hmm. It's on site in KC. <laughs> it's so great. Uh, okay, Giants, Eagles, Max. You're going up against the Italian Wonder. Yep. A little house divided. Also, Max, no. people were saying we we mushed 
the agent. He still is agent. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He's just not off field. Right. Yeah. So. He hired a marketing agent, which I'm pretty sure happens all the time. Correct. Yeah. Um, and they did the right move. He went out to the pizza place. I think he did the appearance for free. He's a stand up guy. Yeah. Stand up guy. Uh, Max. Yep. Max is a hoop guy now. Mm hmm. He's yeah, just big, big day. Nova and Sixers. That was a big night of hoops last night for me. Big night of hoops. I went over to say hi to Max last night at the bar. I sat down next to him at the table. I was just like, hey, Max. And he just looked at me and goes, how the fuck are we losing this fucking game? That's not what I said. That's almost exactly verbatim what you said. Some guy came up to me at the bar and was like, is Max, like, real? Like, are you guys, like, does he, are you guys make, you know, is that on purpose when you guys get him mad? Or is that, like, planned? And I was like, if, you know, we were planning that, Max would be the greatest actor in the world. Mm -hmm. He's like, you think if I go up to him right now and get him mad, can I? I was like, just go ask him about Jay Wright in the middle of the Villanova game. Oh, w man. What would you say, Max? I don't know. He well, he immediately was like, "Hank told me to ask that." Oh, but you wow. did snap. Yeah. He he got the snap. Eagles offense is broken, Max. The get right game. Okay, they scored. Third, uh, the, the spread is alarmingly high. Yeah, yeah, it is. They they scored. Eagles scored twenty points or more in the first half ten times last year. They've never done it this year. It's until until Sunday until or Monday. Sunday Monday. Monday. Uh, Ben Solik wrote a, a deep dive article on the Eagles' offense being broken. It was a good read. It was basically like Shane Steichen had at least some type of offense that, you know, flowed. And, and Jalen Hurts' injury, which we've been the first to report, is actually a, a big detriment because they run – they don't run under center except for the push-tush, tush-push. Um, and they run it like he is a – they run their offense like he is a scrambler and he hasn't really been a scrambler this year. Designed runs, yes, but, like, scrambling runs, no. They also – like, the play calling is just very – Vanilla. Like this, yeah, it's like the same six play calls. It's essentially smashing the A.J. Brown man coverage button yeah, they over said, and over. They said they were uh, at the end of the game against the Seahawks – the the goal of that play was to get pass interference. I hated that quote. Yeah, yeah. What, tell I was going to say why I hated it, but I want to hear why you hated it. Because you should never go into a play with the result hoping counterpoint to be a, Joe Flacco. I I don't care about Joe Flacco. Okay. The whole middle just go to the middle of the field. Get the yards. I don't need to get mad about that again. I agree with Max actually. Hey, Joe Flacco can do it. Because he's really good. He's at the it. one guy you should do that. But Jalen Hurts to ask him to do that, if it, you're almost saying like, "Hey, go out there, throw an incomplete pass, pass on purpose." Yes, that's like that's what they were asking to do, and I don't like that at the end of the game when all you needed to get was it was 15 also yards in the middle of the field. It was also tough that Christian McCaffrey went on the Manning cast and like knew the perfectly exact. predicted the play, mm -hmm. and that's not good. Is this a must win? Yeah. Yeah. Has to be. Has oh, it to is? be. Has to 13 be. 13 and a half point favorites. Has but I mean, you lost a must win. Yeah. So your must wins mean nothing to me. They always meant nothing. That's not true. Oh. Also, take that clip and put it on the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Last game. Oh, Nerd Nugget, did you do it? Jalen Hurts ranks second in the NFL with 33 total touchdowns, trailing only Josh Allen, who has 37. Hurts needs two total touchdowns to tie his franchise record of 35 set last year, which he shares with Randall Cunningham in 1990. Sounds like he's the guy. Mm. Mm. Maybe. Great stat, Jake. Maybe. He did say he was the thermostat this week. I like that quote. I'm the thermostat. I set the temperature of every room I'm in. That's just a good mentality to have. Yeah. Good mindset. It is. Uh, okay, best game. Ravens of 49ers. Ooh, boy, is this a treat. I can't wait. It is it's a uh, good Christmas present for America, isn't it? Yeah. There's, it's also, I think, the latest two teams with the best record in each uh, conference have played since, like, 1993. Mm-hmm. Whew. Whew. I love the Niners. I love the Ravens. Okay. I like that we – yeah. I love, I, I love the Niners. I just think – I don't think that the Niners can be beat when they have their team together. If you're missing Trent Williams, Debo Samuel, then that's they're obviously much, much weaker. Well, we're talking spread, too. Yeah? I'm talking spread. Oh, you're talking spread. I like Ravens and spread. Okay, I like the Niners. I've, I've yet to determine whether or not I like them, but I think that I like them against the spread. Okay, a couple things for the Ravens case. Um Shout out to guys at Sports Info Solutions. The Ravens are second best uh, in the league at, or sorry, 
they're first in the league uh, in stopping uh, yards after catch, which is what the 49ers feast on. Think about all the times when it's like, you know, Debo over the middle, Mm -hmm. 10 yard, boom, he takes it to the house. McCaffrey out of the backfield, little, you know, screen, boom, he takes it to the house. Ravens gang tackle. They do a good job getting to the ball. I, that's part of why I like this. I like the Ravens for that reason. Also, I like the Ravens because Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are 19-5 and five against the spread as an underdog since 2015. And Lamar, remember PFT, 19-1 and one straight up against the NFC. I don't look at the Niners being the NFC. The, the Niners they're are just, different. They're just the Niners. Here's another one. Is this truly Monday Night Football? Yes, Joe Buck will be on the call. Seven the straight upsets on. outright. Yep, Monday Night Football. Uh, do we know what the word with Kyle Hamilton is? I do not. Yeah, I think the Ravens are going to keep. I think they're going to stay in this game. Kyle Hamilton feels disrespected. I don't like that. Oh no, he's disrespected going to this game. By he's disrespected that they're underdogs to the Niners. This is, this you is should, what I'm saying like you we, should be underdogs to the Niners. Like you maybe not five points, but Tomlin gets all the credit for game. being the underdog guy. Harbaugh is just as much an underdog guy. Yeah, he they they crush as underdogs. Yeah, I, I still like the Niners. I just don't think that the Niners, with a healthy team, I don't think they can be beat. Brock Purdy is just good, just playing good. And with all the talent that they have, I I love the Niners to to win every single game that they're in if they're healthy. And if the Niners win this game, I think it's pretty much set that they're going to be – it'd be tough for them not to get the one seed. Yeah. Yeah, because they've beaten the Cowboys and the Eagles head-to-head. Is there so, a- and And their last two games are – Commanders, oh, I'm sorry. That's going to be bad. And the Rams. So I I would say that maybe they're going to take their foot off the gas if they've got the one seed locked up. Well, they can't get it locked up this week. Kyle Shanahan is going to put his foot to the ground against the Commanders. He still fucking hates the Commanders, yeah. no matter. Even though Snyder's gone, he is going to want to score 50 on us. I guess they could get it this week if the – no. The Lions, Cowboys, and Eagles would all have to lose. Rams could be playing for a playoff spot in that last week. That, that game could be interesting. Oh, you're talking yourself into this? No, I'm just saying. Well, no, but if the Niners win this week and against the Commanders, the Niners will have the one seed. Well, they, they could lose this week, too. Could lose this week. I guess the Lions could still get it. I wonder what the tiebreaker is there. Is there a line that you can bet right now on AFC versus NFC in the Super Bowl? I think so. Because I, I feel so, so strongly about the Niners that I almost want to bet them because I'm sure they'll be plus money, right? No. You mean they'll be the Niners to win as a future, but I'm also curious about what the AFC NFC Super Bowl odds are right now. It. I'm sure there is, um, but then you're obviously injuries. That would suck. Yeah, that would suck. Yep. Uh, Agreed. What's the nerd nugget here? Uh, in running back Christian McCaffrey and wide receiver Debo Samuel, the 49ers are the first team in NFL history to have multiple players with five or more rushing touchdowns and five or more receiving touchdowns in the same season. Yep. Those guys can do it all. They can do it all. Also, how many people... They getting in, tackled. Yeah. How many people in media, if this is a good game, I'm expecting like 10 or 20 uh, journalists being like, sign me up for round two in Las Vegas in February. Are you, when you say that, are you saying you're going to tweet I, that? I'm, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and, I agree you are going to tweet that. But don't you think a lot of others will too? Yeah, and give yeah, me all the popcorn. Sure. Yes. Yeah, give me all the popcorn. Yeah. Or wouldn't mind one another one <laughs> Wouldn't mind another one between these two yeah. in no, February. That will definitely happen. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm trying to find if there's that line. I'm trying to find if we 50. I'm sure someone has. I found it. it. What is it? Uh, AFC Conference plus 115. Okay. So yeah, would, so that would be a good bet. It'd be what, like minus one? Yeah, like oh, yeah, five, one, ten, something like that. Yeah, and you and you would have to imagine if the Niners roll to the Super Bowl, they're gonna be more than a field goal favorite. Yeah, I think I might do that. Okay, just go NFC. Yeah, should just take the Niners to win the Super Bowl, even though it's a terrible line. I was looking at what like that 240. is. Two right? forty, but it's probably better than it would be if they win this game on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they win this game, they will, they might be like two hundred, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, we ready for some picks? Yeah, I'm ready. Standings. I wish that we were doing more picks. We can. So we're locked in at three? Yep. Yep. And one of them has to be on Monday. Okay. So for the 15-minute opening act, I'm at 19 and a half. Max is at 15 and a half. Memes is at 15. So I'm close to safety, but not there yet. Right now, they're half a game separating Max and Memes. Uh, One hour. Big Cat, 19 and a half. PFT, 18. 
Hank, 14 and a half. So three and a half with seven to go, not six. And Big Cat, you are five up on Hank with seven to go. Okay. Who goes first? Max. Max. I will be taking the Ravens plus five and a half on Monday night. I like it. I like it, Max. The 49ers. And we have to pick a, a Christmas game, right? Yeah. Okay. I no, see five. Yeah, a Christmas day, yeah. yeah right, right, right. Yeah. right. Five. See five? Yeah, five. Five. Can we not take the same picks? No. Even. No, no. there's three games on Christmas. You wanted the holiday pick. Holiday pick is the holiday. The Ravens. Max, Hank wanted the Ravens. I, I, I'm still fighting over here, too. Okay, all right, that's fair. Memes. I'm going to go Lions minus three. Okay. Hank. Against the Vikings. Hank. I'm gonna go 49ers. Ooh, minus plus five. Minus five. All right, I'll Against go the, the over in the Ravens 49ers game, 46 and a half. I'm gonna take the over in the Giants Eagles game, 42, 42 and, a half. and a half. Okay. Jake got two picks. I'm going to take Patriots Broncos under 34 and a half. I'm seeing 34. Same. I see 34 and a half. I just refreshed. Yeah, I see 34 and a half. And I'm going to take Chiefs minus 10 against the Raiders. Okay. That is my PFT. I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins minus one against the Cowboys. Okay. Yep. I'm going to take hold your nose. New England Patriots plus seven. Good pick. Against the Broncos. I'll be taking the Cowboys. Oh! Shocker. Earth. I I was thinking about taking the Cowboys. like, nah, I got to leave that for Hank. <laughs> Hank versus PFT. Huge. Wow. Your boys. Lot on the line for Hank. Loading Fins up. up, PFT. Fins up. up. That would be huge, Hank. Miami has a Dolphins. Fins. The greatest football team. team. They run the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. All right, memes. I'm going to take the Jaguars Bucks over 41. Mm. I see 41 and a half. I see 41. 41 it is. I am going to take Wow, that just changed. The Cardinals plus 4 against the Bears. It's four and a half. Four and a half. Love it. A lot of movement today. Um and I am going to take the Packers Panthers over 37 and a half. Ew. <laughs> Gross. Offensive player of the week, Bryce Young. Gross. Okay. Memes. Uh, holiday pick. I'm going to go over 43 Giants Eagles. And that was already picked? I took it, yeah. yeah Good pick, though. It. It, fuck. Love that pick. And over 40 and a half Raiders Chiefs. <laughs> you're just, just going to go to the next over. Yep. <laughs> Jumping around. <laughs> Hank, big pick. Huge. I'm going to take the... Patriots Broncos over 34. Ooh. Okay. And a half. Let's go 34. Well, let's see what it is right well, now. Well, I took under 34 and a half. I'm taking under 34. Over 34. Over 34. Does, <laughs> so we're having different lines. Does, does that work? I think so. Right now, I just refreshed it. It's over 34 and a half. Okay, so you're taking over 34 and a half. Do you want to change your pick? You can change your pick. Can I change it to over 34? You want to buy a half point? <laughs> I'll let you buy a for half, an extra minute. <laughs> I'll let you buy a half point. It's Hank. definitely going to be twenty to fourteen. But if you lose, you have to add ten minutes onto your nah, set. I'll do thirty four and a half. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what, PFT? You talked me into it. I'm going to take the Browns minus two and a half. Okay. Good pick. Thank you. I'm going to take Falcons Colts over forty four and a half. I like Ew. that. No, Shane Steichen overs. Yeah, it's a, it's a good money. Bet. Taylor also, Heineke. Taylor Heineke, I get to root for my guy. Jonathan Taylor and Michael Pittman in both play. Oh, mm. huge. It's big. I, I definitely knew those things. Huge. Pittman's okay. playing? Yeah, full participants in practice today. Wow. wow. Built different. Just making sure everyone took a Christmas pick. I think we all did. Jake, finish us off. I'm going to take Bucks minus two and a half against the Jaguars. Bucks are feeling good right now. A lot of good picks. Overall, so I think if Hank if Hank well. went three and zero oh and PFT went zero oh and three, what would it be? Two half 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 yeah half with four to play. 
So and then goes, they have if he goes two and one and PFT goes one and two? Four and a half with four. That would be it. Wait, he'd be up four and a half? Oh, well, if if PFT be tank this week, it's over. Right. No, but if I go one, one and, two, and two and Hank goes so two, and two and one. So it'd be two and a half with four. Not two dead. And a half with four. Not dead. Still alive. You need the sweep. Sweep is everything. Yeah. You got Cowboys Dolphins is pretty much everything. Yeah. That is that's for all the marbles. Yeah. Uh okay, should we do fantasy fuckboys and we get to jewels? Let's do it. Yo, 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 yo. Yo, yo what's up? Yo. It's Fabrizio Guatemala. Fabrizio. Fabrizio. I still want to miss the holidays. I love the fucking holidays. Tis the fucking season. You got food. You got family. You got everything. You got football. The three F's in life. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Love the holidays. Shout out to the holidays. Tis the season. Triple F. Hell yes. My sit -em, Coastal Carolina. Okay, yeah. Since when can a coach go to the beach with some of the dancers on the team? What is this? Fuck What you. is this? Wait, he just North had, Korea? He just had some gumas. Yeah. He's there for the bowl game. They're going to the beach. It's the holidays. What the fuck? Lighten up. My sit -em, Redacted. Or my sleeper is redacted. Yeah, you you definitely want your name redacted. I think we're going to see a lot of redacted this week. On I'm, Epstein? I'm saying 50% plus redacted. Henry oh, shit. Henry Lockwood was not on that list. Facts. Oh, not shit. one of the redacted names nope. on the list. Okay. Hey, what's up, dickheads? It's uh, Anthony Giuliani, Tony G. And Anthony and Big Ant. Yo, what up, Bob? My starting is my uncle Rudy. Rudy, uh, he can't pay. He's got no more money. He's he's flat broke right now. So just move on to the next one, all right? You, you leeches aren't sucking off this teat anymore, all right? That all went to a security guard's haircut. It did. It was great haircut. That great guy, haircut. That, that's the barber that knows the time of day. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what for. Uh, my my sit-in is Cameron Diaz saying that you got to normalize couples having separate bedrooms over oh, here. Tell well, you this man. much, if Cameron Diaz and me, she tried to give me a second bedroom, I'd say you got another thing coming, girl. We're sleeping in the same bed. I'll take a second bedroom, call it the fart box. Fart box. And then my sleeper this weekend is Tommy D. Tommy D for the Paisans out there. He just Let's trademarked. Go. He just trademarked the passing Paisan. Love this that. Week. I like that. I like that nickname, Tommy. Trademark Tommy Cutlets, passing Paisan. Tommy is going to go into Philly, and that crowd's going to be rooting so hard for my guy. And they're going to say, hey, this guy, he's a good guy. He's, Stand up guy. He's one of us. We can't root against our guy, the passing Paisan. I and that's that. what I love about the city of Philadelphia. That. I love that. Uh, what's up, fuckers? It's Tony Baloney. Hey, Mr. Baloney. My stardom is cheese and crackers. Holiday season. Fill up. Mommy. Oh, boy. I go hard in the paint. Pepperoni. Fill, you Holy fill up fuck. The pursuit. You got the seven fishes you got to save room for. Don't even give me a dinner. I'll just see. I'll just sit by those cheese and crackers all fucking day. Cotrudery. Yeah, cotrudery. My sit -em is Zion Williamson. The rest of his contract is not fully guaranteed because he's too fat. Yeah, he sat out a bunch of games last year, and they said, guess what? Yoink. You yeah. ain't getting this money. He had to be under 295. He wasn't under 295. Real fucked up to say this to him right before Christmas. Wait, wait, they actually weighed him in and yes. had a weight clause? The unusual contract also states that some of his weight in pounds and his body fat percentage must be less than 295. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate. That's discrimination. It is. My sleeper, rivalries. Charles Barkley said he'd root for Afghanistan over Alabama. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. That's a real rivalry. Both have the same literacy rate. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, that's Iron. That was an insult contract. That's that's tough. Like, how, how did... The NBA media not get their hands on that contract before to say he has to stay under 295. There would have been like a 295 watch Twitter account. Yeah. Up. It's like when Kyler Murray's contract yeah. was leaked. It's like you have to watch X number of, of hours of film a week. So it's, it, the way it reads is I don't think he's 295 pounds, but so it's the sum of his weight in pounds and his body fat percentage. So he could be like 275 and he's like 30% body fat. Yeah, that would rock. Yeah. If, yeah, that's what I would do. I would just lose all my muscle weight, get down to 250, 40%. Yeah. Um, that's unfortunate for Zion. Yeah, that sucks. It sucks. Remember that girl that was like, hey, Zion, I, I want to have your baby? Yeah. That whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. Could have lost some weight, a little more sex. Yeah. He had, what did he had? He had uh, like Pepsi and Coke in his bathroom? Yeah, that's why Tyreek Hill's in such good shape. Yeah. You see the guy, not an ounce of fat on him. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Let's get to our good friend Julian Edelman in studio. Before we do that, PFT, you had a quick word from our friends at BetterHelp. I did, yeah. I want to talk to you guys about BetterHelp. Part of my take is sponsored by BetterHelp. Whether or not your family gives gifts during the holidays, you get to define how to give to yourself. And the holidays are a great time to do that. So whether it's by starting therapy, going easy on yourself during the tough moments, or treating yourself to a day of complete rest, remember to give yourself some love this holiday season. I've personally benefited from therapy in the past when I was going through some loss. Talk to a therapist. Help me feel better about myself. Help me feel better about my day. Help me just have a better attitude. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PMT today. Get 10% off your first month. That's better H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash PMT. And now, here's Julian Edelman. Okay, we now welcome on one of our favorite guests. Been a long time. He's canceled on us like five times in the last year. Busy man. One, Busy man. One time. But he made the trip to Chicago just for us. Literally for you. It's Julian Edelman. <laughs> What's up, three, guys? Three-time Super Bowl champion. One-time Super Bowl MVP. Future Hall of Famer. Have we? Why haven't we had a Julian Edelman Hall of Fame debate recently? I, think, I feel like that died down. I think we had it right when you retired because your your retirement got hijacked by people being like Adam Schefter was like possible future Hall of Famer. Yeah, and then we had to discuss like whether or not you were Hall of Famer in the moment that was supposed to be about saying goodbye to the game. What's the question? The question is: question are, is are you a future? Yeah, Hall are of you famer? a Hall of Famer? And follow up question. Will there be a certain amount of times that you don't get in the Hall of Fame that you'll be like, actually, I don't want it? Like, if you get voted in, like, nine years after, you'd be like, that was kind of a pity vote? I don't vote. I don't okay. Know. We'll say it's a pity vote. Yeah. The thing is, I think, you, I think you've got Hall of Fame moments. Like, I can imagine the DVD. <laughs> this is so mean that we're just doing No, it's that. good. I'm saying, like, this is good for your case. Where yeah. I, I close my eyes and I think about Julian Edelman. And after I get past the, the thirst traps and the shirtless pictures on Father's Day. And the PEDs. And the P. No, he got his drink spiked. <laughs> um, I envision Julian Edelman making that catch in the Super Bowl against the Falcons. Yeah. Can't tell the story of football without Julian Edelman. That's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah. Who would, who would give your speech? This is making you uncomfortable. I like it. Heck. I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I haven't even thought about it. Is it weird when you see that debate happening and you're like, this is kind of weird that everyone's decided yeah, to debate Yeah, because everyone like, gets mad about it. Right. Like, I'm saying something about it. I'm like, I, I, whatever. Right. At like they're talking. People are getting, like, legitimately arguing. Yeah. You, you haven't said anything. You're like, I just played ball. Yeah, I just played ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, you, so we haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Want to talk about just current NFL. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, but... Uh, there's been reports that a coach might get fired. Yeah, I, I've seen him. I've talked about him. So do you think Ron Rivera will get fired? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, I think he probably – well, I actually disagree with you on that. I think he's going to be out, able to go out on his own terms after the end of the season. It's going to be a mutual parting of ways that is in no way a firing or presented as a firing. Um, but I think what Big Cat might have been alluding to – and correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to interpret what you're saying and misinterpret it, Big yeah. Cat. Um, there's another coach – won a few Super Bowls with you in New England, and uh, there's a lot of people talking about the possibility that he goes to the Washington Commanders. It's a discussion that's happening across the league. Mm. Could you see Bill Belichick coaching for any team but the New England Patriots next year? I mean, I think it's a reality that's going to that's gonna come. You know, I won't believe it until it's done, but it, it, when the media starts getting on this and starts talking about it, where there's smoke, there's fire, and... Um, I just hope it's handled correctly, mm -hmm. you know, like professionals, because, you know, Bill is a huge part of the success that we had. I mean, he laid the template. Mr. Kraft was a huge part of the success that we had. Tom Brady was a, like, it's a team sport. And, uh, you know, he, he was, I think he's the best coach that I ever had. I always felt prepared. I always felt like we had nuggets on, on teams and we had, we had a competitive advantage because of how we prepared and the, the, the time that the coaching staff always put into the game. So uh, could I see him coach for another team? It's going to be weird, but yeah. I mean, this is national. Everyone gets fired. He used to say that all the time. Bill would always say that. 
everyone gets fired in this business. You know, and I remember him talking about the media once and he was like, you know, one of the things were how we were supposed to handle the media, this, that. And he goes, look, you know, they're just looking for a story. Like, there's going to be a day where they throw me into the fucking bus. And it looks like it's been it's, that It's day. starting to turn that <laughs> way. Right. So Hank's got to go in a second and do this live stream. What, what would you tell Hank to give him? Because he's kind of down. Like, yeah. He doesn't, literally all he has left is this lighthouse. That's all he's got. The lighthouse. The lighthouse. Is How is the got. lighthouse? I haven't been yet. Fake as fuck. It's not. Yeah, it, it seems awesome. Yeah, but he he's like beaten down. He's he doesn't know what this is like. He's living the other half. It's the end of an era. Yeah, yeah. It's what do I say to Hank? I mean, Celtics look good. Yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> that's, that's what he's been doing. That's a great answer. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's the Bruins are doing pretty good, aren't they? Are they doing good? Yeah, yeah. He's a huge you know? puckhead. So. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be tough probably for a little while. This is this is, you know, when the empire falls. Yeah, it takes some time to to rebuild. It's kind of a, a somber transition because it is. He's been such a big part of that entire area and just a part of football for so long. It's Thanks. gonna be weird. Oh, what? what? Sorry. What were you thought we were talking about? Hank. I thought PFT was talking about me, but. Oh, yeah, sense. Hank too. Hank was a big part. Like Bronk told us what a big impact Hank on yeah. had on winning the Super Bowls. Um, amongst the guys you played with, there have been a couple names that have been maybe linked to being the next head coach of the Patriots. We don't talk about another man's job, so we're not going to say that Belichick has been fired or anything. But I'm saying hypothetically, in a scenario where you had a new head coach next year, between, let's just say, uh, let's say Mayo and let's say Vrabes. Who would you want taking over for Belichick? Ooh, that's tough. I, 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 I'm a fan of both. I think Vrabel's an unbelievable head coach. I mean, it seems like his team always squeaks away with wins they're not supposed to have. I mean, they've been number one seeds. They've, they've built something in Tennessee that's been pretty competitive for the last, what, eight years? How long has he been there? Six, seven years? Seven, While, yeah. Eight yeah. years? You know, Gerard, he, he's one of the smartest football players I played with. You know, he was the guy that was helping me get lined up when I was playing DB. I'd look at him, he's cover fucking five, get over there. You know, so you, Gerard knows football. Um, but, it, it, you know, he, he hasn't coached a head coach. He hasn't had a head coaching role yet. So if, if it was – if I were to go that that route of, of hiring a coach, you know, with, with the pick that they're probably going to – I would want to probably have an offensive-minded guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, that's kind of what the league's going to. Matt Patricia. Bring him back. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe Matty <laughs> P. Do you think – play a hypothetical out. Kraft walks into Belichick's office after the season. He's like, look, I think time's come. We're going to part ways. Belichick says, what if I bring back Ernie Adams and Dante Scarnecchia? And Kraft's like, shit, the boys are back. We got to do this. Does he have that card in his in his back pocket? I don't think so. Oh. I think they're out. Dante's over in uh where did he used to go? He somewhere in Rhode Island. Narragansett. And mm-hmm. he swims laps right now with the whales. <laughs> like eight, I'm not joking. He's like eighty five years old. That guy would swim every morning. He's a badass. Uh I don't think he's come out of retirement. Um and, and Ernie I have no clue where he is. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably for the better. Yeah. yeah. He's probably just off the grid. Off the grid. Yeah. Like, he's uh, like Jason Bourne. He probably yeah. is still keeping notes, though. Wouldn't you think? Definitely. Yeah. Like, he never I bet stops. You I, I honestly wonder if, if Bill ever calls those guys and asks, asks or is he just in the what the, the program of I'm with the guys that I'm in right yeah. now. But yeah. I remember Dante when we didn't have him. We, we had Gouge, Gutierrez, or uh, the offensive line coach. Uh I remember I would see Dante. He would come in and he would consult, you know, I think do some of those kind of roles or work a guy out or, or go look at a guy, um, you know, for Bill. Uh, so I don't think that card is going to be able to be pulled. Yeah, I like the fact that, that Dante is just out swimming with whales. He just needs to be around his big dudes all the time. Yeah, He really <laughs> – I just like being around big things. He does, dude. He's probably yelling at those whales. He, yeah. Get formation. <laughs> Hit low. Leverage. Uh, <laughs> put your fucking hand – like he would yell. And that, that that's why he was such a good coach because you would see in film, you know, in the film room – 
sometimes a coach will just like yell at you like we got to get better like like Dante would break down the fundamental of what you have to do like it'd be really mean how he would say it like you fat fuck put your right foot over here drop your ass put it on your hand like he'd give the actual technique and that's what a good coach is yeah you know what I mean it, uh, I love the the guys behind the guy too in football because it's oh, like yeah. uh, the uh, Georgia strength and conditioning coach Scott Sinclair. He was with Saban at Bama yeah. for all those wins, and then he goes to Georgia and they win two national championships. And I'm like, this guy, he's got the secret sauce. Like he's the guy behind the guy. He's the one who's with the players all through the off season. Like the strength and conditioning coach is the most important coach I believe in college football like each program cuz yeah. he's with them all the time. He's making, you know, little skinny kids, 18-year-olds into men. Yeah. And it's like the guy behind the guy that doesn't get all the shine. Sometimes those guys are like what makes it all tick. Without a doubt. I mean, it's it's always funny to see the dynamic of of the head coach with the strength coach cuz the strength coach is kind of like he's the ears, right? He's the ears, but he's also, you know, the head coach would go up to the strength coach and be like, you know, how, how we running today? How, you know, how, you know, like, he's like checking the cars and, you know, he's yeah. a mechanic. You yeah. Know, ah, you know, got a couple of hamstrings coach, but we'll get them right in the, you know, weight room, you know, like <laughs> shit like that. And, um, uh, it is, I think the strength coach is more important in college because you're, you're influencing the, the younger kids. Uh, you know, um, when you get to the pros, uh, you would think that you'd have that relationship with the strength coach, but it, it, you don't. Yeah, because you guys aren't lifting heavy and stuff, right? You do in the off season. Yeah, but it, you don't want to get hurt in the weight room. You yeah, know? and you know it's more specialized to your position. By the time you get to the National Football League, where you you may even hire a third party, you know, trainer to, to work on speed or you work on change of direction. You know, there's all these guys with those their techniques and stuff. There's always an LA guy or a fucking Florida guy. Yeah. Or a Houston guy where, you know, the bomberitos of the world where you go and run with him and he makes you, you know, so it's just different once you get, when it becomes a job. So one, I want to talk about the whole league right now. Maybe, you know, get all your thoughts. Cause you're, you're on TV all the time. Also games with names back. back. Uh, great podcast. We've both been on it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, like you're going viral. I feel like every other week right now. With the MJ story, telling and that was that was fun. so MJ told you he was gonna he was gonna bet on you before the Super Bowl. He said, "I got a lot of money on you guys. Don't fuck it up." <laughs> that had to be the I most was, intimidating so, thing ever. So intimidated, but I loved him even more after. Yeah, like he 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 put his alpha on me. Did you think during that Super Bowl, like at any point, like no, the break of an <laughs> break of the game, like shit? MJ's no, got I, money I completely on completely forgot about it. Uh, you put the blinders on, but uh, yeah, that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. So you know? so one of the big stories right now. Uh, is Kansas City yeah. wide receiver room. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is going on in that wide receiver room? Like, if I were in that wide receiver room, I'd just basically just be keep keep telling Mahomes, like, I'll catch the next one. Don't worry. Just keep throwing it to me. But, like, the pressure that those guys have on them, yeah. did you ever have a moment like that where your room is not doing everything? That, like, maybe there's a bunch of drop balls in a game, and you're sitting there and you're like, Tom was giving us, like, the throws. We just weren't making the plays. Yeah, I've been in rooms like that. Um, you know, we're, 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 you're not holding your end of the bargain up, you know, as, as, you know, as the team goes, uh, and that comes down strictly to confidence and it is hard for young guys like in, in Kansas city right now, these guys are young guys, it's a young group and, and that, that beast of Kansas city, I mean, they're like the new Patriots, they're, they're yeah, like the new Pats, you know what I mean? You have the, the, the superhero quarterback, you got a great coach, you guys have a system that's in place, you got a tight end that, you know, demands all the eyes, so everyone's looking at the receiver and saying, well, it's going to rely on you. So it, it's tough. I'm sure they're, they're hearing some of the noise about it. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to nowadays with, with the social and, and everything, but it ultimately comes down to the, just pre practice and preparation like whenever I would go into like a, I had a, a couple of drops or something, I would always just, I'd hit, you know, you'd go back to the fundamentals. You have to do extra ball drills. You have to, you know, you, you take practice like they're mini games, you know, just because the more pressure you put yourself through in practice, you know, it makes the game easier when that pressure comes on the game. So, uh, 
you know, there's going to have to be some leadership that comes out of that room. You know, the, the Rasheed Rice kid, he's yeah. had some production these last few weeks. And I guarantee, you know, Patrick Mahomes is the type of guy that's going up to him and Watson and saying, hey, guys, like, I know there's been a couple drops, but let's build off of the the successes, those little successes that you had, you know, and that's what they have to do. Just try to stack good ga- days together in practice, and it'll translate in the games. Yeah, are drops contagious? They are. Go they on. are. How, how so? Because I've heard people say it, and it always sounds funny when somebody on TV is like, drops are contagious, you know? Um, but is it like a mental thing where – uh, one wide receiver, he, he drops a couple easy catches, and then that just adds the pressure on the other guys where they're like, fuck, that guy's dropping it. I really better make sure that I catch mine. And that added pressure makes them more likely to drop a ball? Yeah, I, I would say probably. But the good leaders and the great quarterbacks, they don't, they, they don't yell at you for drops. They yell at you for stupid shit like, you know, not knowing a formation or a, a pre-snap penalty or – you know, uh, you know, a technique and a route like that's when they get mad. They they understand drops are going to happen, uh, and, and as a quarterback, you're you're on that level of where you have to play, you know, and figure out each guy in your rooms what kind of coaching or what kind of love do they need? Do they need tough love? Do they need you know supportive love? Do they have, you know you how are you gonna how are you gonna make these guys get the best out of themselves? So. I still think they're figuring that out in Kansas City. But when you have, you know, the defense that they have right now and, and Patrick Mahomes, you're still going to have a shot. I don't think they're the favorite. You know, I think Baltimore is real tough right now with what they have going over there. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they go. I mean, they're probably going to win their last three games. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just going to get them more confident. You know, and, and that's what it's really about. These next three weeks are going to be – you know, a pivotal part of the season because, you know, you're starting to get your, your grind going. I mean, I remember back in 2018 when we lost to the Steelers, we had two losses in a row in like close to December, late November. And like, that's, we were, we were hitting the panic button, right. you know, like we got to get this shit going right now because, uh, you know, you got to get in those runs and that's where your confidence builds and you get excited for work because there's, there's a, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm-hmm. The season's right there. You know what I mean? You know, that, that those weeks when you're like six to probably 12, your, your body doesn't feel good. The lust of the season starting is not there no more. Guys are banged up more. Weather. You know, weather's starting to get a little colder. It gets hard and it becomes the grind. This time of the year is when, you know, you start, you start getting those cream teams. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever, have you ever had to react from losing a must win game? Yeah, that that that's that that Steelers game. We felt like that was a must win game because we we dropped one. Yeah, and then we lost that one. You know, and then we went on our roll. But you know, it, it the the sense of urgency in the building. You know, after those kind of losses, you know, when with the teams that I were I was on, you know, the urgency went up. So the schedule might actually work out well for the Chiefs, where it's like they get three easier opponents maybe they use those weeks to get right and then in the playoffs they're like we don't have the drops anymore our receivers yeah. are fine i mean it could i mean it comes down to making the plays uh you know i tell you right now when you get to the playoffs there's always the saying the coaches say we ain't saving nothing so that's when you know you get the plays and the, the scheme comes out even more more magnified something that you've been working on all year so you know i have trust that they're going to be able to figure out ways to get those guys the balls uh, you know, the way they need to get it. Yeah. Ha- can the 49ers be beat? Yeah, but it's going to be tough. Well, how how do you beat them? Like, they look so much better than everyone else. I mean, you got you to gotta run the ball against – you have to run the ball against them. The, the number of carries, and it has to – you can't lose on first down. You, you do not want to get on a hole against that defensive line that only has to rush four – and then you can get all that crazy scheme of the defense behind, and they fly, they're physical, they all swarm to the ball, they play hard. Um, it's it's tough, but you have like whenever we were playing against the best defensive lines, the Von Miller D lines and shit like that, we always had to run the ball because those guys don't like guys coming at them. Right? They want the pass set. 
you know, so they, you know, they want to, they want to go and do all their fucking moves that they practice in the hallways when they're, in, you know, going to the cafeteria. You always see the defensive ends doing a fucking shake, shake this, or <laughs> it's weird. Like Ninkovic and Chan Jones used to do that. Ooh, um, but uh, yeah, I just got a loss of thought. Yeah, no, Wait, with, all right. with the Niners, it's interesting. I was gonna say the way to beat them just injure the quarterback. Uh and then the backup quarterback too. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you got you gotta play tough. You gotta you gotta play uh you gotta keep that offense off the field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that and that's what the running game does as well. And you have to e execute in the red area and on third down, which uh, that's where they're good. So we, we had Jeff Saturday on last week and something that's very interesting to me looking at like the NFL right now, specifically in December. There's teams that have had good seasons, but they have a glaring weakness. Yeah. Like the Eagles defense or the Lions defense. And we asked them, like, can you correct this? Do you remember a time when it was like, we're not that good, but something scheme wise or how we practiced was able to fix that? Because it does feel like every year there's a team that we kind of write off and they can make a deep run because they fix something that, you know, whether it be defense or offense, that they look totally different come January. I, I, I honestly think it's not just one thing that you fix. It, it, it comes down to, you know, guys working together to execute a play. And when you get guys that don't worry about the, the big holes that you're, you, you have or whatever and, and get to, like, the, what we have to do to win, if you can get everyone to buy into that and you guys can have good weeks of preparation and when practice looks, there's not a ball on the ground, there's not a fucking split double team. Like when all those little things start getting corrected in practice, that's when, when you go on your runs, you know, that's when the confidence is rolling. It, 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 it's, it's stupid. It sounds stupid, but everything from the success that I had or our teams had, you always saw it in that week of practice. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had like a great week of practice and you're feeling really good and then you go to the game, get get your teeth kicked in? Yeah. You're like, what happened there? Yeah. Um, I, one year against uh, Baltimore, I had like, and I, it was when we just traded for like Dion Branch. And I, and we, we traded Randy. So I, I was sitting there like, man, I'm going to get hella more reps. Hell yeah. Had a great week of practice. And I ended up having like, I got knocked out of the game by Ray. And I was like, fuck. That was like the only one time. But mm -hmm. other than that, anytime I had like a really solid week of practice. It translated? It always translated. Yeah. So you think the Ravens out of the AFC. You think they're the best team. I'm going to throw another team at you. Team nobody wants to play right now. You know who the, that team is? Let's hear it. I think it's the Bills. Yeah. I think nobody would want to play the Bills right now. I got to see this week from the Bills. Yeah. Because that was something they've never done. They've never relied on the run game. And that's something that I've always said that they they should incorporate. Josh Allen under center. You know, and I got to see this week with the Bills because that, you know, the offense or their, their defense when playing from behind – is, is doesn't play the same from how if they're playing from ahead. Yeah. You know, that's when they can start using their schemes and McDermott can do all his stuff on defense. You know, that they've, they've kind of struggled uh, on the defensive line position, not including last week. Uh, last week, Oliver and, you know, Vaughn was effective. I think Vaughn's going to continue to get better with his knee. I mean, he's an older guy and he's still recovering and with that injury, which I've had. You know, you get better as the year goes on because you need that load. Um, so I, I expect him to get better, and he's a veteran. You know, he'll probably start kicking it up. Yeah, that's a tough team to play. Um, but I got to see this week how they're going to – are they just going to try to go back to what they were? Because, you know, the, the the sudden jolt of a really good game, like they haven't been like that all yeah. year. They, they've been so inconsistent. Two and in a didn't... row, too. Yeah, like the Chiefs yeah. and, the, and the Cowboys. You know, so like it's – I want to see some consistency because it's usually the teams that are consistent – consistently doing well uh, in big games are the teams that go on runs. The one thing I loved, uh, Joe Brady had a press conference, I think it was today, where he was like, our plan wasn't to run the ball like that. It just worked. And then we're like, why would we go away from that? 
a re- which, redo team, a, yeah, re- a do over team. That's what coach used to say. Yeah, but that's that's like the best. Those are the best offensive coordinators, I would assume. That like, yeah, they might have a plan, but if something's working, why would you? You don't have to win pretty. No, you got to feel the the flow of the game. Right. Like you have, you know, we were never a scripted team that like a lot of the West Coast teams. They have a fifteen play script. And they'll go through that 15 play script and then they'll do adjustments off that script. Mm -hmm. You know, we had, we had like kind of a, a a hybrid of that where we had a script of plays that we wanted to get in the first quarter that had plans to see how they were playing it to, to be able to counter it. Like a flow chart. Like if then, if this play works, then exactly. There's full flow. I mean, they have the category that's the play sheet is one of the most incredible things to see from an offensive coordinator how they design their play sheet they're got to have it plays their fucking third down windows that are broken up in three to two two to five you know short yard like it they have it all broken down when you look at those things it's pretty cool um so yeah i think uh yeah you you got to feel the flow of the game if something's working yeah because like you spam it that that chiefs championship game that you were in yeah i feel like you spam that play of you over the middle it was like it felt like five times in a row, and you know, a couple of those run gap plays that we were running, yeah, we felt we had you know good uh, good matchups on a lot of those plays, and you know when it's nut cutting time and it's you know the playoffs, you got to go to the plays that you you executed the best throughout the year. Yeah, so when you're spamming a play like that, do you ever like does the defense ever say like yo we know this is coming? Yeah, and but they still couldn't stop it. Sometimes that's got to feel like a superpower. Nah. It doesn't feel like a superpower, but, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it was a superpower. I was thinking about it, you know, like, uh, cause I, I used to run a lot of those crossers and I would run over to the thief or robber, which is the other safety that comes down. So they funnel you into him. So it's a form of doubling, you know what I mean? Where this guy will not get beat on the outside and this guy will, will, will catch you on the inside. So that's a way of using someone. And, like, when you get on a great page with the quarterback, there's one thing that can never be covered, the perfect throw. Yeah. You could have a guy in the perfect position. You can have everything. But if there's a perfect throw and you make the catch, I mean, it's uncoverable. That's the mm-hmm. Dan Marino. Isn't that, wasn't that his quote? Was it? There's no defense for the perfect pass? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It was. What about in the NFC? There's a team I'm concerned about. I've got rising levels of concernment with this organization. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. Would you be yeah, concerned? If, I am. If you were, an, you're, you're concerned. I would be concerned. I'm hitting. Uh, I'm pressing the urgency button. We need to. We need to press that. Uh, you know, they've been struggling with an identity all year on offense, uh, the defense. You know, they're designed to get after the quarterback because that's where a lot of their money's at and their yeah. draft capital. And they really haven't been getting after the quarterback, and they haven't been able to stop the run. Uh, and, and you know, we've all seen what. what you know the secondary has been doing um so you're getting to the point where you you have to be concerned mm-hmm. you know you, you're gonna start playing the best teams in the league like when you go to playoffs it turns like a flip like a switch like everyone's playing like 15 to 20 percent harder there's nothing else that you keep in the gas tank did your belichick voice there i liked it did i yeah flip the switch yeah everyone's playing a little 15 to 20 percent harder that was good you slipped it mm-hmm. it was like playoff mode just went in your brain yeah no it, it's um i i would definitely be concerned i mean they're turning the ball over you don't that you don't want that so you don't want to play bad football in december would you and, be concerned or would you say season's over i wouldn't say season's over that's smart yeah but losing a must win well, we'll see how they they could still be what fourteen and three or what are they? They're four losses. Now. Four then thirteen and four. Thirteen and four. I mean yeah. that mm-hmm. they they very 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 easily could be thirteen and four. S- speaking of turnovers, how much did it suck when you turned the ball over? Going back to the side. Oh my god, it was the I, like worst. What, what would would you be like putting your head down, hoping that no one says anything, knowing that someone's going to come ream you out? If you fumbled when I was on the Patriots. You were. They had a term. You're in the doghouse. Yeah, we you love know? doghouses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my receiver coach Chad O'Shea. He would always say, "Yeah, you're in, you're in the." You know, I remember I fumbled on a punt return against the Giants in like eleven or something, and uh, he goes, "Yeah, you're in the doghouse with the big guy." <laughs> <laughs> That's what. <what's laughs> and, uh, I'm sitting there, and, and I'm like, "Oh fuck!" He's like, 
yeah, you better stack some good practices. <laughs> he had quite so, a doghouse. Yeah, so, no, then, so a couple of good practice go, you know, and I'm like, and then, you know, I go check in with O'Shea. I'm like, yo, am I still in the doghouse? He goes, you, you got a pot coming out, but you're still in it. <laughs> <laughs> he used to say that so, shit. So the receivers coach would be like almost the good cop. Like, listen, we're try I'm trying everything with the big guy, but there's well, the, nothing I can do. You're in the doghouse. Well, you know, a good a good position coach is a guy that, He's kind of like a, a psychologist. Yeah, you know they have to be able to to read the room and and get the points that the head coach is drilling into him to you know a, a group of eight guys. You know so and every guy's different, so he has to put that psychologist cap on and and you got to play and pull certain strings with certain guys. You know, and I was that kind. Of, I I liked tough love, and I was terrified of Bill, and he knew that, and, and so he would play that game with me. You know, or he would say it to other receivers like, "Yo, you motherfuckers, the big guys, you guys need to start doing some shit." Or you know, we're gonna. It, I remember he used to say, "Or you're gonna get that that call window or aisle." Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> give me so, your playbook. So that's what you responded to was like the fear of getting cut. When I was yeah, when I was younger, and then when she, it changes, everyone has a different stress in the, in in the locker room. Okay, you know when I was a you know special team guy and a guy trying to make a role and learn the position, I had to make myself you know versatile, and I had to make I had to be good at a lot of little things. I wasn't great at one thing yet, mm -hmm. um, you know. So, uh, you know, by the time you get to you know, I establish a role, then you have a different kind of stress where you don't want to, you know, you don't want to let your team down. You know, you, you see another guy working his ass off right ne next to you, blocking. Uh, you see the quarterback making the right read, getting the right play call in. Everyone's doing their job. You didn't want to be the guy that didn't do his job. And so you, you feel disappointed. So like anytime you came off the field after, you know, you fumbled or you had a drop or something, you know, it hurts you, you mm -hmm. know, you, you get sad. Yeah, because you you made the you let the boys down. What's yeah. uh, who's the AFC team? We I can't like figure it out. I like, Baltimore. I like Baltimore because the only reason I like that I like them, their defense is you know. Their defense is fast sideline to sideline. They always seem to get better and better each year. It doesn't matter what Ravens team in December, their defense is always getting dialed up. Uh, on offense. Zay Flowers, I think he's a really good little football player, man. He's 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 had some really good production. Isaiah Likely, I liked him two years ago in the preseason, and, and I I'm a huge Mark Andrews fan. I think that dude's a man child, and that that was a thing that concerned me with them. But you know, Lamar Jackson's playing when he plays in control and and, and decisive and doesn't take the crazy risks. Um, you know, he's unstoppable, and he gives the best matchup against any any. Any a NFC team, you know, if you think about, that's what I think. Who who could challenge the 49ers? Because yeah. when you have an X fact, like Lamar Jackson is just a game plan killer, right? You know, he can go take a game over, you know, and, and especially if he's, you know, Odell. When when the when the lights are bright, you know, Odell's going to come out and he's going to start balling. And he, he he already started to see it churn with him. He's getting better and better. I mean, he's coming off a knee. He's an older guy, so he I expect him to get better. I, I think they're a scary football team, especially and on special teams with John Harbaugh. Like they got all they they take importance in all three phases of their game. Yeah, and that's scary, you know, because you can win a game on special teams just like they did two weeks ago on the you know the punt return. Yeah, yeah. you know, what I mean that that'll win you games, and and when you have that, I mean, I I think it's scary, and they're playing they're playing consistent football right now. It is crazy special teams. You like ignore it. And then it always feels like playoffs. That's when it shows up. Like teams that have spotty special teams, even if it's like, you know, their net punt yards yeah. or just like where they're letting Field teams position. start yeah. from. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you get to January like, oh, that's actually really important. Very. I mean, if you look at like all the Super Bowl winners, you can see their top categories. You know, it, it's, it's, you'll, you'll notice that special teams, they're always in the top eight. Mm -hmm. You know, the, like, that's a big part of the game. You know, yeah. I know it's getting dwindled out with a lot of the rulemaking right now, but uh, I remember in my career, <clears throat> we would win like two games a year on special teams. Yeah, you know, it, whether we, when we came here to Chicago and CP fucking took one, we couldn't get anything established. It was a grind game. They had a pretty good defense. We weren't getting anything going on offense. You know, and we busted that. Our defense played well, and 
you know, and, and we won the game because of that. You know, the, that that can win you games. Yeah. What about your old nemesis, Joe Flacco and the Browns? Ooh. I know. I, I like. Do you I, like watching Joe? Or are you at the? Program? I do. Are I mean, we came in the that? same year, so you, yeah. be, you, you, you know, it, he was an, an old ne a nemesis, but uh, you know, I, I I'm excited for him and, and how he's doing. You know, because it it didn't look great when he was in New York. You mm -hmm. know, he. he yeah, he, I, and I talked to Chad. He's over there, Chad O'Shea, with um, the Browns, and they're saying they, he said, "I mean, he can still throw it." You yeah, know, he gives him he gives him an opportunity, and and it's really, it's really interesting. That team reminds you of the Baltimore team that he won a Super Bowl on. Yeah, you know, all all Flacco's got to do is really take care of the ball, hit a couple of those deep balls, mm -hmm. you know, which he loves throwing. Uh, you know, he's had some mistakes, but you, you expect that for a guy who just came off the couch, you know, and and. He's played some really good football, even with those mistakes. Well, if he yeah. can do what he did when he won a Super Bowl and not have any interceptions at all in the playoffs, they I could see Cleveland winning a Super Bowl if he doesn't throw a single interception. Well, I think it's going to be a tough road. It'll be a tough road, but you know they're going to be a they'll be a strong team. Yeah. Has uh, has there been? We asked Gronk this. Has Brady texted you at all? Being like, I'm thinking about coming back. No. He would text you, right? I don't think so. You don't think so? Um, I'm too Did far I out the now. Gang? You're in the media too You're much? too you far think? out? Yeah, I think I'm out now. Damn. Has anyone gotten mad at you for a take you've had in the media that you used to play with? Or Mac Jones got mad at me. Oh, really? What'd he say? <laughs> he, I don't know. He texted me. He was like, what the fuck, dude? He go, nah, he, he texted me like, what's up? How are you, bro? <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Uh -huh. And you knew you said something. It was literally like right after the thing I said it. <laughs> I was like, I'm good, man. I'm taking my daughter to school right now. How are you? Oh, you used the, <laughs> used the daughter shield. Oh. Uh, yeah. Father of one. You humanize yourself. Yeah. Like putting food on man. the plate for my family right yeah. now. How are you? Yeah, how are you doing? Got to get a takeoff. Uh, I actually said, oh, no, I'm great, man. Weather's great in LA right now. <laughs> just came off a crazy law. <laughs> that was a couple years ago. But no, I, I, I haven't, you know, Brady will. Call, he calls me a little media media darling now or something. Like uh, that. I like that. Gronk also said that occasionally Brady would text him with just highlights of the two of them playing. Does he ever do that? Like, hey, remember how awesome this was? Uh, he hasn't texted me highlights, but he'll he'll text like certain plays that we had if he saw a game. You know, because now that you're retired, we've he, never watched the games on TV. Yeah, he does right. the this could be us, but you playing. Yeah. <laughs> like remember that? Yeah. Remember when we used to do that yeah, together? It's more of a remember that. Yeah. <laughs> that not a this could be us. So how's everything going? You are a media darling. Games <laughs> with names back. Who's the dream guest on that? Uh we already had you two, so yeah. You know, they, they yeah. Check those dreams Sounds off. Good. good pandering, I like that. Um wait, is this the first time you've been on since you weren't on the Mount Rushmore? Was he not on the Mount Rushmore? I don't know. I no, we voted for him. Yes, we voted for Yeah, we voted for you. Hank did Rushmore. It. Hank did not. That was hurtful. Yeah, fucking Hank. <laughs> but who's the dream guest? Uh, it's an awesome podcast. Like it's genius. I would, for you I guys would love to get Jordan on yeah. or Bill. Oh, you know, I think Bill would be I think fun. Bill, I, you and Bill in like a big game. I think Bill would be. I would just love to see him because I know the fucking smile he gives when he does. Certain, like, I would love this. I've never done the an impression in front of him. Of him. Yeah. <laughs> So I would I would I would start it like, hey Bill, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how he reacts. So he probably be like, all right, <laughs> shit out of me. Do you, think, do you think he would want to do like the twenty eight to three game, or do you think that Bill would want to dive like way back to some like week seven Cleveland Browns game where he remembers like the cool shit that he, he might did. go back to like a Baltimore Colt game <laughs> yeah. when he was a special team coordinator. Like that dude, if it's the further in the weeds, he loves. Yeah, or the what was the game where he uh. He like make made time disappear. Was that against the Jets? Yeah, he was on the sidelines. And Vrabel did it back to him. But without that was a different one. There were two times. So yeah, one, we did it first, and then Vrabel, yeah, did, Vrabel the did the same thing to, to us in the yeah. playoffs. Yeah, but the first time you did it, I think was against the Jets. It was and, the penalty. And they yeah, you guys took two consecutive penalties, and they showed Bill on the sidelines, and he just had this shit eating grin that was just like going across his face, and I think Adam Gase. Was the yes. other coach who was just like trapped in a vortex? Like, what the fuck is happening to me right now? That was awesome. That was you no. Know, I don't know if he would do that. He he loves the Giants games. He would love talking about a Giants game. He, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or an old. I don't know. I I, I I would say whatever game he would want. 
Where mm-hmm. where do you think you rank in Bill Belichick's favorites? Um, who and, and is there a clear favorite? Oh, yeah, LT, LT, LT's number one. I loved LT, yeah. He loved defensive guys. Yeah, like we used to call Devin Devin Belichick. You know, <laughs> you know, he he loved Mayo. He was like a little bit like Gerard Belichick. Mm-hmm. Love defensive guys. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Cause he should. You should. He's got a good poker face, bro. Like, you he, should you don't, be. A lot of people don't know what he's really thinking. If of. you ever got him on games with names, you should ask him. Like, give me your top ten. Cause I feel like you should be on there. Just like your yeah. story, scrappy. Un- like you're the perfect Belichick Patriot of like. Guy that no one wanted to draft, yeah. like switching positions, utility, then becomes an incredible wide receiver. I, you know, I, I I think he respects my game. I think he respects me, uh, which is the ultimate. You know, because he's seen a lot of players. You know, and you know, I I don't know I I don't know exactly what he said, but he he released a statement when I retired, which you know that shit brought tears to me. You know, yeah. You know, coach was like dad. Yeah, dad you know? saying I love you. Yeah. It was like the first time you said I love you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The first time I've been working so hug. hard my entire career just to hear that. Yeah. Made it all worthwhile. I mean, that's how it felt anytime he gave you a compliment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Spe- speaking of, how's Frank doing? Frank's the man. Frank is still working the, the uh shop. auto body shop. Uh, uh automotive repair, but yeah. Yeah. He's still just grinding every day. Grinding. He's he's all worked up about this bill shit too. Oh really? Yeah, he call does he call into Tom Coran? <laughs> <laughs> he does? He, him and Tom talk. And so he's like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. And my dad still watches like, we ha- so we still have direct TV at my parents' house. And so he has all the Boston channels and he still watches like the Boston media stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> just to see if they just say your see- name? Nah, just to see. Like he still loves the team. He, lo- I, he loves Belichick. Yeah. You know, he loves Brady. You know, he, he you know, he, so he's he's been all worked up over this whole thing. Like, I they can't fucking do this to coach. <laughs> How have you tried to get him to take some time off? Like, Dad, you've yeah, bro. Like, so I had I had my parents down for Thanksgiving, and I was like, Pop, you, can you can you come? You know, Tuesday. Well, you know, nah, I got I got to come Wednesday. I got to close the shop up. You know? <laughs> You know, we're getting into the year, man, and getting into the year, it's tough. <laughs> you know, so he's got to close all the books. He, we'll get him on a vacation here soon, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Where would he want to go on a vacation? I think he said he wanted. He's never been out of the country. He's never been to Europe. Okay. All right. He I, he wants to go to Greece. Okay. Yeah, he wants to see like he wants to see the island stuff, but he also wants to see like the old history, you know, of Athens and shit. Like, yeah, Parthenon. Think, yeah, I don't know. Get him there. Been. I got to. Yeah, um, a good family trip. There was a, a a big story in the news this week. Made some waves. It was Richard Mendenhall. Sweeney? Oh, Richard Mendenhall. Yeah, uh, doing the hypothetical all black versus all white Pro Bowl. I drafted you onto the uh, all white team as a defensive back because our ranks are so thin right now that I feel. Who's like, the receivers? Uh, receivers Cooper, Cooper Cup, Cup and uh, Thielen. Yeah, and maybe Braxton. Berrios. We got stacked tight ends. You got Stacked Berrios tight ends. and Thielen over me. Well, no, well, I mean, no it's retired. current. It's we're, current. We're, we're oh, current. current. But yeah, yeah. our ranks were so thin at DB that I was like, I think we have to call up Julian Edelman and see if he That'd, can come back You'd be play. struggling. Could you guard Tyreek Hill? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> How many yards, if you, were, if you were matched up against him for four quarters, let's say it was a close game, how many yards do you think he put on you? <sighs> he put a lot. But I, I tell you right now, I'd hold him every goddamn play. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hold him at yeah. – I'd use five that yards. five yards. Yeah. And, and – I'm holding. That's what I would do to Welker when I cover him in practice. He gets so fucking mad. Just hold. You just just hold him. <laughs> just hold him. Make it so bad that they can't throw it to him. So I actually think the defensive back might be the hardest position to play on. Yeah, you're doing everything backwards. Yeah, you're and, doing in, everything in a back pedal. Yeah, and every rule change has been put into place. Every so advantage hard. is on the offense. They know where they're going. What's you don't guy, know where they're going. What's your take on this whole uh, the the kid who got suspended? Which one for the hit? Oh, the Colts. Um, I I think it's bullshit. I it looked indefinitely on that play. It looked like anything in slow motion looks bad. Yeah, there there's not a lot we see with hockey. I think more than we talk about with football, where you you slow down the replay and you like look how malicious this hit was. It was the stroller to the head, and if things are happening at like warp speed in real time, you can't adjust your body that yeah. quickly. In that case, he was diving forward 
almost into the path right. the defensive back was going to. The defensive back knows you're not allowed to hit a guy high, so your your target as a defensive player is going to be right around that midsection area, yeah. and that's where his head was going towards. I think it's just way easier to say with the benefit of slow mo, like that's a dirty play. And it's also like we we for some reason offense, and you know there are times when it's clear that the defensive player is targeting, but. Offensive players don't get any criticism in terms of like that was a reckless play on his side too. You know, it was like both sides. It was an unfortunate hit, but I just think indefinite. I think it should have been a penalty in the moment, but suspending is crazy. Does he have a record? I, he must. He might. Does I he have know. some priors? Yeah, he must. Know, the, the guy from Denver definitely does, and so but they're that's looking like, at him. That's such a bang bang play where it's that's like tough. both guys are in the air going for the same spot. I mean, it's if the like, quarterback makes a better throw, we don't right, have it. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. And that goes in the whole what Brady was saying. You know, like if if you were like rewarding offense for lack of execution of a right, play. right, or it's like even like you'll see a running back lower their head into a defender. Yeah. It's like that never gets called. They're using they have their a helmet couple as times. A, they've been doing yeah. it more lately. I mean, you can clearly see these point of emphasis is going on right now. Yeah, yeah the other would, one, like lining offside. up offside. So yeah. did did you ever get called for lining up? Did you line I, up offside? In Pittsburgh, so I was in the slot a lot, and I like to hug that line so I can get into my route quicker. And so I would always go, and I would look at my guy, and I'm telling him I'm back. And I and I did it on film. And, you know, sometimes you get lazy, and you just you do it without making eye contact with them. Motherfucker called me, and I was clearly I, – I mean, I was close to the, the line of scrimmage, but I wasn't on it. And I on film, I gave him – I'm off. You know, so I, I have been called for something like that. But it goes into, like, the most fundamental thing that you practice in every walkthrough, every fucking practice play, every seven-on-seven. Seven. Right. Look over to the imaginary ref, and you make eye contact with them. That's like what we were taught, you know what I mean? So – yeah, I think that's sloppy. Yeah, that was the the Mahomes rant about the refs. I I, I don't get mad at Mahomes either. Well, no, though. it was it well, was that, that's the right moment, after the game. Right after the game, and I also like watched it, being like, what he's really mad about here is that they're not executing. Like they're not making the little things that you have to do to win football games. You know, it it it's like when you make when you make hardwood floors. I heard this. I heard Belichick say this to us once. Okay. He goes, you know, like, it's like making floors, you know, like, you got to go and you got to hammer down each nail and you check, you double check all those nails because you may miss one and you may not see it, but three months down the road when you stub your fucking toe on it, you'll realize you should have checked again. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that, you know, it's just getting sloppy execution. execution. These little things that you're not doing in practice, these little things that are coming up, you know, that that's probably because they haven't been practicing it right yeah yeah no it's true um every house you're sneaking out of make sure that there's not a ring doorbell camera on yeah it. might catch you shirtless yeah you know that was, he ripped, looked good he looked i good really in that wish like, he had powerful. ripped a fart though I, you know what i'm gonna like tell him gonna i'm gonna fart. ask him about it the you first should, yeah i'm gonna go up there and i'm gonna say hey coach um you know that deep breath that you took <laughs> to gather yourself <laughs> That's what I used to do every time I had to step in your office. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he looked good in the video. Yeah. I thought he looked, looked strong, strong and powerful. Yeah. yeah, he's he's you know, Moses got him going right. That's the strength coach over there. Yeah. He's still on the bar. Speaking of which, um, there's some people talking. Haven't seen a lot of shirtless pics of you recently. Yeah. Are you getting soft? I'm not soft. I'm still cut. Prove it. I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> Six pack? Uh, Prove it. I got something. Prove it. Gronk said he didn't have it like that anymore. You want to do a football drill like I that, know, that Father's Day? Uh, we'll stand in front of you or stand behind you. <laughs> a classic no Father's Day that. shirtless, you know. I'm sweating father's. still from the goddamn shoot shoot thing. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, Bad. I just people are saying like, hey, where's the thirst traps? Berrios is taking over your crown. You know, I got a kid now. It's tougher when you're around her more. You know, when I was playing, I only have her for a week at a time. So then, you know, like when you have her in your schedule all the time, I can't just be. Can't be just thirsty. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't be working thirsty. out as much. That's what I heard. I heard that you weren't really going to the gym. Yeah. No, I go. I, I, bought I heard you've gotten soft. No. You sure? Yes. 
Okay, because like that can happen to any podcast. They were calling you Julian Fettelman because you were eating so much. Mm -hmm. Fettelman? Yeah. yeah. I do like to eat, though. Yeah. I went to uh, We can Owls. tell. Owls. We can tell. Oh, you went to Owls Beef? Yeah. 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 Pretty, Hell yeah. Pretty good. Uh, yeah, I just don't want to see you get soft because, like I said, like podcasting can get you soft. Can it? You get oh, that little hunch. <laughs> like we're, we basically are, are the, you know, like the evolution chart, a man walking upright. Podcasters go in reverse. We just eventually are going to just be on all fours. That's true. Yeah. We, we sit should in do chairs all day. Down. That'd, yeah, we that'd be great. Well, I did do one. Remember when I threw up my oh, back? Yeah, that's true. You guys came over and I was laying down for it. Evolution of man, upright, upright, upright. And then the one at the end is just a guy like with a, a micro podcast. microphone. Just like, be, yeah, just being like, women should have more sex with men. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, or the opposite. Fellas, yeah. stop having sex with women. Make yeah. them earn it. Yeah. yeah. Why are you as a man... Having sex with a woman. The gayest thing you could do is have sex with a girlfriend. Would you agree? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> those so. Po those, pod <laughs> those podcast clips that come out every now and then are just like, what is this? What is happening? Yeah, right why now? are you as a man debasing yeah. yourself and acting feminine <laughs> along with a woman in order to get a female's <laughs> approval? You're disrespecting yourself. I don't see that content. Really? Yeah, my algorithm is. You've got a good content. Yeah. Good, good algorithm. You see any yeah. deaths? I see deaths every day on Twitter. No, I see I see a lot of like fights. Yeah. I always get trapped <clears throat> in like, I get sad when I see a bad fight. I know. It's like, oh no. The situation. Watch out. It's coming Not behind. even that though. Like, what if you're that guy and you're fighting someone, he hits you, then like it flips a switch where you can't stop and you have to beat him up. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Do you still yeah. have that switch? Do you still have that dog? Once you, you know, when you're born with it, it don't go away, boys. You sure? So how do you, how do you release the dog? I box. You have to have an outlet. I'm oh, box. box? Rough yeah. and rowdy? Not like that. No. no, but would you? No, absolutely. You wouldn't be interested? No. You versus Welker? You versus Max? No. no. no Rough boxing. and rowdy. I don't need any hits to the head. I just, you know, I like to train it. I go to church out in Santa Monica. It's a pretty dope spot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just rough and rowdy. Max says the one thing about Max, he says that he could beat Julian I'd beat Edmonds the ass. fuck out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a boxer? No. No, he's just a big dude. No. Uh, he's no. got big, meaty no, clankers, no, too. No. no. It would be bad news for me. It would be very bad news. I would news. be gassed within the 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> He'd be fucked. All right. Big uh, guys, you got to get in and out. Yeah. So, uh, Super Bowl pick. Is it Ravens Niners? I think it's Raven Niners. Are you going to the Super Bowl the whole week? You gonna Probably. come hang out? Yeah, we got it. We're doing a, a games with names there, at the win. Um, Who you guys got on? I don't know. Who do we have? I think maybe Mark Wahlberg. Oh, oh that'll be good. Yeah. Is he doing nine eleven? Huh? <laughs> if there's one thing you could change about this day, Mark, what would it be? Yeah. I would have been there. Games with names. <laughs> Mark Mark Wahlberg on the plane. I would have been on that flight. He had that quote. What did he say? He said things would have been different if he was on. It. Yeah. <laughs> You're taking care of it. Things would have been different. Um, would you guys ever play that situation? What would you have done? I, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say. Yeah, I think I'd just try to trip someone running down the aisle, and then if that doesn't work, it's like, well, I tried. I think I'd probably just cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably a lot of tears. Now, what, what do you think about the Sean McDermott thing? Where, oh, where yeah. Apparently in, in the preseason, he motivated his guy. Yeah, I heard about it. Because like, football coaches talk about just crazy shit all the time in locker room to get guys motivated. What's what's the craziest thing that a coach has ever tried to use as like a motivational tool for you? Nothing along that line. I probably would I don't know. They always used sometimes they don't like nothing like that. We used to get these tip sheets on, you know, Saturdays uh from from Chad O'Shea where it have the play call the call sheet of all our plays. We'd have like you know, all our run run game block assignments, like printouts of how it looks on film. You know what I mean? It's just so you can go over it and study before. And on, like, the last page, you'd, you'd have, like, some kind of saying or some old, like, history knowledge of, of the team we were playing or, or you know, Braveheart quote or something. Mm -hmm. Nothing crazy. But yeah, but it's like... I don't remember anything. The I mean, it, it's happened where you're like, Where's he going here? With yeah. Mm -hmm. The McDermott story was like, that's bad. But also football guys just, they kind of take it too far sometimes. Yeah, but usually football guys are pro-military. Yeah. I make that like, why haven't we talked about the Navy SEALs that took out Osama? Yeah. Like, true. Why, why couldn't we do that? If he had that's just a, done Zero Dark point. 30, zero dark, it would have been perfect. Zero Dark 30. That's so true. Uh, you know, Those guys were badasses. Yeah. yeah. He just got lost. He got lost a little bit. 
He tried, I guess. <laughs> he, he tried, tried yeah. He tried. You've, you've For officially like, said he you've tried. Scraped the last. I think I would have been pissed though. Yeah, I would have been like, "What the fuck is he talking?" Yeah, wait, about? hold on a second. Those are the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure that that is definitely a story where I, I mean, it's clearly out. One of the players, someone said it, but that's when you know. You That's go to the locker room after a team meeting, you're like, what the fuck was he talking about? <laughs> things are bad. Yeah. yeah. Is Coach okay? Yeah. <laughs> Something you up. just you just did Mark Wahlberg for that for that hype up speech. You were like, if I were there, I would have spoken up. Yeah. I would that would have ended differently. No, I, I said I would have probably in the locker room would have been talking to like McCordy or Nikovich, like, what the fuck was he talking <laughs> about there? Was it Will Compton that told us about yeah. a coach that he had that was like talked about um, like being in the military, he served in Afghanistan or Iraq, and he was like, "You got to shoot whatever's in front of you over there." Safety's if, off. Safety's off. If it's a child, if it's a woman, if it's, it's a, a man, dog, a dog doesn't matter. You got to kill it. And that was a, that was a pump up speech. And Will Compton was like, "Wait, what? Child? Yeah, what? wait, we're <laughs> killing dogs Safety, now. Safety's <laughs> off. <laughs> Safety's off." Uh, yeah, some you could definitely go over the line. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, I got one last question. Rowback question, R-H-O-B-A-C-K dot com, promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase, Q-Zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, everything, com. The most important question, how do we talk about Brock Purdy? Is he the MVP? I mean, right now, he, he probably is. That's a, I mean, that the MVP is always a quarterback. Right. Offensive player of the year is always someone else. But, but it's very interesting because Brock Purdy, it feels like there's a lot of people online who, like, I don't want to say nerds, but maybe nerds who are like, oh, it's just the system and all this stuff. And then you see a lot of guys who played the game who are like, no, he's balling. Like, the way he's throwing with anticipation, like, this isn't – yes, of course, if you put Patrick Mahomes on the Niners, he would look great. But, like, you have to give credit to what Brock Purdy is doing. To. You have to. Uh, you know, the, this whole game manager thing, people don't realize it's more like a game operator. You know, mm-hmm. being able to go in and, and communicate – personnel group play call check out play give like a, a you know being on the same page with each guy in the huddle being able to do that and execute at the level he's doing is very impressive yeah i mean he's got too many situational throws where he's throwing a you know a third and eight you know third and 13 an in cut anticipation there's too many of those throws to say he's not good you know we've seen this system with jimmy We've seen this system with Trey Lance. It looked nothing like it. Right, the same players. So you know, we some you got to start talking and putting some respect behind his name because he's playing good football. He he looks like he's always in control. Yeah, he doesn't ever look flustered. Um, You know, I'm really impressed of of how he's playing, and I I hope to see him continue to succeed. You know, could it's a it's a great story, and and he's continuing making this. You know, a, a bigger and bigger narrative on it, and the more we talk about it, it's the better he he's doing. Yeah, this is, it's not unlike the start of Tom Brady's career. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not saying he is Tom Brady, but if we were to flash back in probably time, more productive. Yeah, if we were to flash back in time, yeah, that 2001, offense, yeah. 2002, yeah. Uh, and we look at what we were saying about Tom Brady then and how he was playing compared to Brock Purdy right now. Yeah, late draft pick, late draft pick comes in no expectation got a great defense he's relying on that right off the bat it's the start i don't know what the finish is going to be but it's it's the start he's he's having a, a phenomenal start to his career and and you hope you know you hope he stays healthy uh and you hope that he continues to to keep the mindset that he has right now because he's a he, he, i've met him we went and did a you know an event at the super bowl last year and he's He's, you could just tell he's got a good head on his shoulders, and you, and you have to when, when you're the face of a team. Okay, we I love – Christian McCaffrey's a dog. Everyone on that team is a dog, but the face of that team is the quarterback. Yeah. Okay? You know, we, we saw what it was when they didn't have the quarterback position going, and, and you see what, what it is when they have Brock Purdy playing. So, you know, that that's that's the league we play in, and he's, he's balling out, and – you know, I'm, I'm excited to see what he does in these playoffs. Yeah. This is a trick question. The answer was Trent Williams, actually. Trent Williams. Trent, Trent Williams, Williams is should a be a monster. Monster. Wouldn't that be just cool if they gave the MVP to an offensive lineman one year? Yeah, I would. What would you have to do as an offensive lineman? To I don't know. Like I, you have pancakes? To, you'd probably have to catch a couple touchdown passes, like maybe three or four. The tackle eligible? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't, you know, I don't, 
It's too vain of a world. The the year that mm-hmm. JJ Watt too vain of a world. I agree. It's yeah. society. The year that JJ Watt had I like agree. all those like he had touchdowns and you know a, like a pick six and twenty sacks. That was like the last time it was like oh someone not named a quarterback could probably didn't LT get an MVP. He I think he have. did. Yeah, he was pretty. But wide receivers never won MVP. Never. Never. I mean Tyreek Hill's right. If he gets, I mean, he's having a hell of a year. A.J. Brown's having a hell of a year. Last non-quarterback, I think, was Adrian Peterson in 2012, I want to say. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. But it's, yeah, I don't, it's. It'd be cool to see the running backs get it, though, if they gave it to Christian just because of the whole, you know, before the season stuff that was going on. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'm looking right. But it also could be one of those things where the league gives it to the running back just just to kind of shut them up. Well, I, I think. We might reach a, a point where we have Brock and Christian splitting each other's votes. Somebody that wants to vote for the best player on the 49ers, they're not all going to focus their attention on the same guy. So those guys might get split up. And then who knows what happens after that. Yeah. yeah Lamar's the, having a goddamn good year, too. Yeah. Is, yeah. The 90s had a, had a lot more running backs. Um, yeah, Maybe. Lawrence Taylor won 1986 MVP. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, yeah, Terrell Davis, Marshall Falk, Emmett Smith. Barry Falk was really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love watching him play. And then yeah, it hasn't been since uh, Adrian Peterson. There was Sean Alexander and in, in Danian Tomlinson in 2006. That year was so. Alexander good. got paid after that, and he was on the cover of Madden. Yeah, he didn't play. He didn't. It... Danian Tomlinson. I had him on my fantasy team in 2006. That was the last time I was good at fantasy. It was awesome. And he would just, he would literally score and every he had 25 single, touchdowns, or and something? he would mm-hmm. throw them too. It was just every week. You'd just be like, oh, that's 40 points. That'll be interesting, San Diego. Yeah. Or L.A. Harbaugh, maybe. I want him in mm-hmm. Chicago, but mm-hmm. I feel like... Harbaugh. That might be... Maybe Belichick. Where, maybe Belichick. Where, where, would you, where would you prefer to see Belichick? I would go? love him on the Chargers. Yeah, because you could go to practice. I would go to practice. Uh-huh. Yeah, to would Chicago. you ever coach? Hell no. Really? Dude, I put... When I was playing, you, you go in, you put 13 hours in... And you're leaving work, and it's dark, and you're watching the coaches see their family in the parking lot for fucking 45 minutes before they have to go to a fucking night meeting. Mm-hmm. Hell no. Yeah. You know, it's it's those you guys love football. You have gotten soft. How many, how many minutes of uh, PMT do you think Tom Brady's <laughs> heard through you? I, the social clips count? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, sure. Probably like 15. Oh, okay, awesome. that works. That's that awesome. works. That's fine. Probably fifteen. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, you like you, Blake Griffin. These are the guys that like we know. You know, you got some other guys into it, which we appreciate. Yeah. Well, it's it was huge for us. Fun, you guys. You guys are. Yeah, we have fun, fun with fun ball. What yeah. if, now? What if? What if Bill said like, Jules, I need you. Like like <laughs> father. I need you bad. I need, I need you That's bad. Different. Jules, I need you bad. These We're receivers taking suck. They have charges. no dog. We need to learn. I need you to be chief dog, and you know, mm-hmm. in the in Alpha the locker dog. room. Yeah. I need you to instill. I need. I need a dog tr- uh, trans- <laughs> transplant in the locker room. He gets Julian Edelman and, and I don't know Caesar Milan to yeah. go in there. I, yeah, we need. We need surgery. I don't know. He needs you, Julian. We need you to put dog into every one of these guys. If coach needed me. Maybe I'd go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially if it was. Hell like, no! I'm not going. To no, go. if it was a top secret dog mission. No. <laughs> but I told. I told. Uh, I told Brady. You know, if you, if you, if. If and when, or when he becomes the the coach of the Raiders or the uh, owner of the Raiders or whatever, a piece of it. I told him he could pay me, you know, a couple million bucks, and I'd work out the talent in L.A. <laughs> three days, you know, three, four, or five times a year. <laughs> it's a good gig, you know. Yeah, and, and could Lana, you carve honestly, something out with, for us? I I don't know. Let me let me let me get my. Maybe we just interview like. Potential guys, we'll we'll do the dog testing. The dog test is just a look in the eye. Okay. Do we have it? I can't see your eyes, so maybe don't 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 take them off. You're afraid. No. Do I have some dog? You got puppy. Okay, that's fine. Where, where Puppies puppy? grow into dogs. Yeah. He, I, I got dog. How could you teach us how to run routes and like have us look like no, what we're doing? No, it's, it's not teachable. It's fine. My, it's, I take pride <laughs> in my blocking. I'm more of a blocking. Myself. You know, it's like speed. Yeah, you can't teach it. I got some great slow twitch muscles. Yeah. <laughs> I do. How does that work? It's just whatever you teach me, I would just do it slower than you ever expected. 
Which I, is almost <laughs> as effective as being You know what? Fast. You're smooth, though, because I was yeah. watching you out there. Smooth? And, and that's what I remember when I was doing, I was young and I had a coach. He goes, you know, I was trying to go through the bags too fast. And I clipped a couple things or something. He goes, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Yeah. That's is that what, Mr. Miyagi? No, I, oh. I was just, what I would say <laughs> that you look like when you're. Yeah, I don't have any wiggle. Wiggle's so important. No. You had yeah, so you much wiggle. A lot of wig. I, I love I love being able to decipher that when you see like a slot, a white slot receiver. He has no wiggle, and you're like, nah. Can't make he it. He can't make it. Not he doesn't have the out. wiggle. No, you got to have wiggle. You got to have the wiggle. Oh, my favorite route that you used to run would be when you go, you do like a half fake to the inside. Actually, I think you'd set up like half step fake to the outside, two step fake to the inside, and then go back out to the outside along that same line. Yeah. Did you ever think about doing like adding one more fake in there and doing like <laughs> three fakes and then coming back to the inside? You try it in practice, yeah. Uh, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Welker used to do that a lot. You, you're playing with people's like leverages, and 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 you try to, you, you know, you get an outside technique. You know, you, sometimes I'd bring it out and go in because they're thinking in cut. If you give a jab release, then you go out in, go up, and then slap them out and get out. You're trying to gain leverage, so you're doing anything you can to gain that leverage. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it's it's tough. Because if you don't get them, you're stuck and you're not getting the ball. But once right. you know you get a, the feel of it, that's when you see a really good route runner. When you see, you know, like Wes Wes Welker was really good at getting guys to flip their hips in such a short span of time, you know, in the slot, you know, you know. So you, you try to mess with those stems. Get wiggle. All right, last last question: Who's the best route runner in the game? Right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Best route runner mm. in the game. It's a tough question. It is. Cooper Cop. Coop Cooper is very good. And and you know, I, I I when I went and interviewed him, I was watching all his you know, you watch the game, but when you watch all of his film, you know, he can run a lot of routes. You know, the guys that run more like the bigger route trees, not a guy that could just run a go or come back. The guys that can run go, come come back, in cut, you know, out, slant fast the bigger your tree is the better you are so i mean jamar chase has really good routes justin jefferson justin too. jefferson has He's like justin jefferson so Diggs has really good routes yeah and i feel like those guys are so skilled they don't get the credit no for being route runners because usually when you're like oh he's a great route runner it's like oh well maybe he doesn't have everything else no but those guys like justin jefferson he changes direction without ever breaking speed or stride or like any you know like yeah he'll, you got to look at that. the tops of routes when you see how they, they cut out of the top of a route and when they come flat to downhill and stuff. Like guys that, you know, they'll break an in-cut and they'll drift up field. Like that's a terrible route. That's why you get undercut picks. You know, you got to – you're basically coming flat to downhill. Mm -hmm. When, you, you know, you, you see that in in a route runner, like then you know that he knows. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot – I mean, route running's – it's at an all. It, it's very good right now. Yeah. Just because there's so much film. Yeah. Guys are learning quicker at a younger age. They're practicing like their releases and they're they're putting these tools on their belt at such a younger age. Like I, I didn't really. I did releases instinctively. They have like five different releases and you know know how to use use them. You know and. and so there's a lot of good stuff right now. Yeah. Well, Jules, you're the best. You guys are you're welcome best. back anytime. I was telling Sam we have uh, open podcast studios. So if you ever need to do a games with names in Chicago, I need to love get a, to have who, you come who, back. Who's a Chicago? Maybe I get Jordan. Yeah, that'd Maybe be good. Here. Yeah, I'd say that would be a good podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That we'd get so cucked. I would be so like, mad. Jordan came into our office I'd and be, did another podcast. I'd be furious. I would be happy for you as a friend. I wouldn't. I'd slash your tires. Can I do it right here? I'd slash your tires while you were doing the interview. I do it in the studio or Actually, I'd go to a satellite. Yeah. I think you could do it in the studio, but you would just have to release a podcast on the part of my take feed. Deal. <laughs> I mean, I'll get back to you with that. It'd be good, good promotion. <laughs> but yes, you got to come back because we love having you around. We missed uh, you. It's been too long. It has. I, you know, I. we got to see each other when I lived in New York. I know. I know. You know, and, I know. But now you're not in New York either. I know, but you're not either. We got to make a trip to L.A. Yeah, you we, guys, we've been talking about it. Have you? Yeah, we've done it a couple times. We've been talking maybe like sometime after March Madness, do like a week in LA, bank a bunch of interviews. Yeah. So maybe we'll do that. Definitely. Show us around, take our shirts off, run some rounds. I mean, Just standard. Yeah. 75 and sunny right now. Standard mm. is the standard.
Christ. Yeah, but that earthquake's coming. It always is. It always is. Taxes. That's all I can say. Yeah. None of those in Chicago. Yeah. I is there no Chicago live. tax? <laughs> no state income tax. Not the same as in California. California. There's no state income tax? No, I'm just fucking. California is tax. like 8%? Fuck here? out of you. I forget it's what like it is. It's like 5. 5? Yeah. California's what? Like 13, 8? Yeah. Psh. 13, 8. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to wear a mask still. Fuck that. <laughs> it, I mean, it's, it is weird out there. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jules. All right, guys. <laughs> Jules was brought to you by Chevy. There's a new family with unstoppable grit, and they are the official partners of the Part of My Take family, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado heavy-duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures might take you. I am a Chevy owner. I went to a Chevy dealership. I purchased a brand new Chevy with my own money. I spent my money on Chevy because I know that they're a great brand. They make a great car. I love Chevy. You're going to love them too. With this first ever Silverado Heavy Duty ZR2, you get Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2 a family with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com, check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official truck of Pardon My Take. Okay, Firefest. Let's do it. Henry? This is kind of like a, it's a mystery Firefest. I don't know if it's a Firefest yet or not. Mystery Firefest. Oh, we're going to decide? No, it's 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 to be determined. Um, we had the, the event last night at River North, the talent show, and then we went out afterwards Shane, me, Max, Evan, a bunch of the guys played some pool, had some Coors Lights, had a good time. Mm -hmm. Got a little wasted, uh, and then I went home and packed. And oh! I don't know. You don't know what's in your bag? Oh, no. You, you should open it live on the show. You got to keep that briefcase shut. Yeah. Did you pack like a Jameis Winston type thing? Oh, no, I mean, it's, it's packed, but I... It, Where it, are you going, San Diego? I'm going to Massachusetts and New Orleans. Oh, yeah, so, you, so that's a double climate pack. Yeah. Wow. You, you should wait until you get home and do like an unboxing of your own clothes that you packed. Yeah. So I don't, I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Are you doing New, new Year's in New Orleans? I'm going, I'm coming back New Year's Eve night. Got it. So we have to work. That would be New Year's that. Eve. Yeah. <laughs> new Year's <laughs> Eve night. Yeah. Well, like day, night. I don't know. Well, yeah, it's New Year's so Eve. So I'll be here New Year's Eve. I will be in New Orleans though. I'm excited. Uh, Billy Strings concert, friends, golf. Hell yeah! It sounds great. I've never I've been to New Orleans for work. I've never really just been for fun. Wow. So. I mean, we had a lot of fun when we went to New Orleans. True. The <laughs> like that was really uh, to, to be not only that, but the final other, four, Coach K. No, yeah. not even that. That one, yes. The fucking national championship was all no. The national championship. Yeah. Was, <laughs> it was that literally one, that we did one, like two that interviews. One was just parting. Yeah. yeah, that was the best night ever. And yeah. one of those interviews, we were blind drunk. Actually, yeah. two of them, we were blind drunk in them. Uh, We've yeah. had a lot of fun in New Orleans. Also, when you yeah. talk about like going to New Orleans for work. When we went there for the Final Four, um, our job was to just go watch basketball games and then come back and be like, yo, that game was awesome. And eat chicken fingers. Yeah. And he, yeah, that was it. Grinding. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Senior Vice President. Uh, yeah. Are you? Uh, yeah, I did. I did do. Uh, it's part I, of his bit last I night. I performed last night. PFT kind of spoiled it, tweeted out my routine. It should be illegal. Oh, you never can do that uh, to a comedian. You can never burn their material. I, I didn't. I just I tweeted out the just the very first part of it. I sent Hank and then the I entire clip so that he could I watch was, it back. Yeah, but then I. The only part I tweeted out was was Hank saying, PFT commenters here, give it up for PFT commenter. He donates $3 million to charity. My name's Hank Walkman. The reason I'm up here is because in about a month, uh, I have to do an hour and seven minutes of stand up. I have an hour and seven minutes. I can do whatever I want with it. I don't have any other talents, so I'm just going to try and go with as much stand up as I can. So I figured we could just get up here. And then there's PFT. Let's give it up for PFT, honestly. Hey, PFT is one of the most humble, humble guys I know. He's worked the last, every Sunday for the last eight years of his life, making podcasts for you guys, the listeners, every single week, three times a week. And on top of that, he's probably donated over $3 million to charity. Let's give it up for PFT. <laughs> That's the part that I tweet out. Oh, that's a good joke. Yeah, it's a great joke. I loved it. Yeah, What's great. the funny part about that? I'm not going to get into it because oh. I'm trying to save it. I don't have a lot of material. I didn't I didn't tweet out the punchline and your reason for saying that. I tweeted too. I apologize. 
No, I think yours, yours was appropriate, Jake. <laughs> yeah, I cut um, it off after my name is Henry Lockwood. Yeah. And I'm going to be doing this a month. No, I just didn't. I didn't realize I had to pass out those little like cases for your phones. Yeah. Yeah, we got to do that. But uh, I did six minutes. So it was kind of a train wreck. So it's going to be a long January. I thought it was awesome. Thank you, Jake. Well, that's that's not good. Unless you beat me. <laughs> that's Jake saying it's awesome is not good. I am a big procrastinator. I can't even consider. We'll see after this weekend, I guess. But I can't consider beating you because then I just won't work on anything. So I have to just pretend like it's over. That's smart. Yeah, it that's is smart. smart. That's really smart. Uh, okay, PFT. Uh, my fire fest of the week. Um, I'm shaving my mustache. No, I'm shaving it before because my my, so my mom's just gonna just look take at the it. Die out. Yeah, it's my mom's so just good. gonna be like, "What? What, are, even you, what are you doing? What are you doing? PFT? Mm. I raised you better than this. No, man. No, no commenters. Is should have finally a coming in. I, th- I agree. I think it looks awesome right now. I've gotten so many compliments on it. What about? Go ahead, Max. I wasn't gonna say anything, but I was looking. At what? Sideburn? <laughs> At the sideburns? <laughs> sideburns? I don't know what Max is thinking. I've had sideburns. up on your no, sideburns. No, no. I've These had sideburns, sideburns aren't that bad. I've had sideburns for 15 years. But you specifically shaved them to look like sideburns. You know, I'm going to shave week. them to even finer of a point just for Do you. Do you know what? It, 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 there's nothing worse than a new insecurity unlocked. I'm, I'm impervious to your sideburn slander. That doesn't phase me at all. Uh, but the mustache leaving, it's going to be the end of an era, sadly. People call me feeble knees when we do the golf streams. It's, it's in my head. Do you guys have those moments where you're like new new insecurity unlocked? I remember in college once a girl was like, your eyebrows are too big. And I was like, okay. I never thought of it. And now I'll think about it every day for the rest of my life. I've had a couple of those. I There was a, a person that used to just like tease me for having red hair a lot. And I was like, my hair's not red. It's new insecurity she unlocked. Was, she was like, you, the worst. you're a ginger. And yeah. then for a while I thought I was a ginger. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm ch- 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 Max's meaty clackers. That's not insecurity. Yeah, that's, see. A, that's a security. Yeah, that's just that's just fact. That's ball security, baby. Yeah. Ball security. <laughs> uh, yeah, so end of an era, shaving the si- the uh, mustache off. Sideburns will stay. Boo. As they always. Maybe, you know what? I'll put up to a poll. Yeah. I'll put up to a poll. I'll let the people decide. Also, oh, my vote counting 10. Okay, deal. Uh, my other fire fest was that Megan making money ate my lunch yesterday. Yeah. And I was very much looking forward to my lunch. I'd been podcasting for like four and a half hours doing a long episode of macrodosing. Oh, I thought it was when she crossed you up on the court. No, oh. no, she she could never put, put the put the clamps on her. Um, she I ordered a Greek lunch. Literally ate your lunch. I ordered a Greek lunch and I was very much looking forward to it because, again, it had been sitting there for about an hour and a half and I was hungry by the time we were done podcasting and I got out and the lunch was gone. Megan came and found me. She said, PFT, I'm so sorry. I accidentally ate your lunch. And you know what? I was like, I guess that's okay because she also ordered a Greek lunch. Yeah. She was like, I got mixed up. I, I saw what you ordered. I thought it was my lunch, so I ate that. I'm very sorry. I was like, oh, that's fine. I'll just eat your lunch then. She goes, well, I also ate my own lunch. Oh. She, di- she double dipped on lunch. Wow. I feel like in that circumstance, you, you offer your lunch to the person and then if they don't take that, then you order them. You should have made her baby bird her lunch. Well, I heard, I heard she was you. she was like passing around. She was like, "Oh, the sandwich I got is really good. Everyone take a bite." Oh no! So everyone ate your lunch. Everyone, I got my lunch eaten by everyone. Damn. This is for the team. Damn. That stinks. So um, my my terms are clear. I just need to hang out with her husband Raul for a night, and then we're back even. Yeah. So that's I get fair. I get one night with Raul. And then it's water under the bridge. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. He's the best. Yes. Mr. Making Money. All right. My fire fest is I lost my voice again this week. Apologies to everyone. I feel very bad. Fuck you to the couple people who are like, dude, no one wants to listen. It's like, yeah, I, I don't want to listen to myself. It sucks. You sound, you sound uh, mature. I, was, I, I went to sleep very early every single night. The problem is our job is to talk. So like I was actually almost all the way back on Tuesday and then Wednesday I had like five shows in a row um but yeah i i do actually care i'm not trying to lose my voice happens once a year thought we were going to get through this football season without it but here we are so i apologize again i'm gonna gonna rest up this the the break comes at a perfect time you gotta start doing throat exercises i do i have these drops i've been doing everything i've been chugging like robitussin at night raw milk Raw milk, everyone said honey, everything. I've been gargling salt water, literally everything. So uh, apologies again. Jake. Uh, 
I wasted my time going axe throwing last week. I waited in line for 20 minutes. It was three for throws for $15, and I missed the thing all three times. I'm not strong enough. Yeah. Axe throwing is one of those. I've done it. It's, it's um, hard. Well, I'm it's also one of those strong. perfect um, schemes that looks great on Instagram. Yeah. And then you get there, and you're like, okay. okay. Three throws I for 15 know, bucks? Like. I want to know who decided that axe throwing was going to be everywhere. It it's, seems like it just happened. It's like pickleball. It is the no, no yeah, it, pickleball so, is taking over the world. That's what the axe throwing people okay. say about axe throwing. But I feel like there's it's probably like some big venture capital yeah. firm that got together with other rich people and they're like, you know what America's going to have in every single town? A fucking axe throwing range. It is. And they're like, that's a great. It's. It sounds like the thoughts of a group of really coked up guys. Yeah. That got together and they're like, you know, like what even if I hit a bullseye, I'd be like, okay. Yeah. You know, the, it, when you look at Instagram, people doing it uh, on, you know, axe throwing, it looks fun. It's like, oh, all your friends together. <laughs> I did it. I literally did it with all my friends once, and it was just like, okay. They're all, everyone's trying to find the next bowling. Yeah. Bowling can just be bowling. Bowling is the best. Bowling yeah. is the next bowling. Yeah. Bowling oh, God. is the next bowling. <laughs> I, I would like. <laughs> By the way, we're would... running back the bowling uh, uh, challenge. For Mount Rushmore next year, I would love to live inside they Jake's brain, where you just like everything reminds you of a company that you should sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to AWL by the way, who used our bowling challenge for oh, fantasy punishment. Mm -hmm. So smart, awesome. Yeah, that that looked like a good time. I think that's one did, of our best punishments. I think that we've he come did five with. for beer and ten yeah. for hot dogs. That was that was definitely a fun one. So we're gonna do, run that back next summer. Uh, Will Levis did not practice today. Yeah, I think it might be Malik Willis, which would be a bummer. Bummer. Give us Tannehill. If it's Willis, I'm going to... I might be... I don't do Game of the Years anymore. But nuclear missile. Numbers. 40. Eight. 18. Should we do two for the holidays? <laughs> 20. 71. Ah, Three. It's the holidays. Fuck no, but that. we will... We'll tape the next two right after this. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. 71. 28. Pug. <laughs> Love it, Pug. <laughs> Pugs a pool shark. Pugs a weapon on the pool table. 74. Oh. Ooh, 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 ooh. 74. I did not want to see 71. All right. We'll see you guys on Tuesday. Love you guys.